Welcome inside the Big Barn here in Billings, Montana. First Interstate Arena, TDS Fiber Field. And another exciting night of arena football with the Billings Outlaws tonight playing host to the Washington Wolfpack. Welcome inside. We've got an exciting game ahead. Jay Cohn to do your play-by-play with you tonight, along with Bobby Beers, our longtime color announcer. Bobby, of course, with uh, indoor football experience dating all the way back to the Colorado Crush. Bobby, nice to have you back. Appreciate Um, it. This looks like a, a lopsided contest on paper what we'll see which teams come to play tonight they already played once this year billings came out on top of that one but it was uh you know it's the lowest amount of points that billings has scored this year billings of course has to bounce back see if they can overcome a heartbreaking loss last week to the nashville cats but jay uh it's an exciting night of football in billings lots of football in billings tonight huh jay absolutely we got the east west all-star game going on over at dallas stadium a high school stars from around the state there you see Carantz Higgins, Billings Outlaws, who hurt his knee in the game last week against Nashville. He will be out. We'll find out a little bit more in the coming week. He has a lower leg injury, but he's a, a huge set of shoes to fill, Bobby. Yeah, lots of A overcome. dozen touchdowns he had in the first six games. That's a big missing piece for this Billings squad. Not only do they have to bounce back emotionally from that last second loss, really a last second loss, but the loss of Carantz is going to be huge in, in refining the replacement. Really, it's a next man up sport in football, but he's a big piece to replace right there. On the other side, you see number nine, Deshaun Williams. He's a a big body wide receiver for the Washington Wolfpack. The question with the Washington team, who will be at their quarterback slot tonight? They just a day ago signed quarterback DeAndre Burrell, a Utah State grad from way back when, second all-time leading passer in Aggie history. He spent time in the NFL most recently, also in the IFL with the Arizona Rattlers. And we'll see, we're expecting to see DeAndre Burrell at the quarterback slot for Washington, maybe in the second quarter, but they're gonna start with JT Tease, who will be uh, behind center, take the original snap. So the Wolfpack come in, Bobby, just one and five. The Outlaws on the opposite side, five and one. But again, how will they rebound to that virtual last second loss to the Nashville Cats last weekend when they lost 57-54 we shall see and the kicker here yeah gotta mention the kicker Melissa Strother she's the only female to ever play and score in the Arena Football League in over three decades 30 years of Arena Football and Melissa's the first female to put points on the board she's gonna get us started here Jay exciting night of football here in Billings and we are underway little squib kick good strategy Picked up by Swoboda across the 15, into the open field at the 25, still on his feet, inside the 15, and look, look at Hunter Swoboda. You can see why he's the the leading rusher in the league. Oh, my bad, that was Dwayne Brown. Well, he's right behind Swoboda in the the rushing department. Either way, three picks it up, finds a hole, nice cut right there, takes it down, makes Strother fall down on her own, and then a lot of of Washington Wolfpackians Drug down inside the 10 yard line. Great starting position for this Billings offense. Dwayne Brown, wide receiver, 5'11, 205. It was Swoboda leading the blocking for him on that. And Swoboda will be right behind quarterback Isaac Harker as the outlaws start with great field position at the nine yard line. Harker right across the middle. It's complete, and that's Dwayne Brown again Brown down again. inside the three. Well, Harker's had a great season so far. Picks up right where he always leaves off. Mr. Consistent right there behind center. And Brown trying to get him into the end zone, looking to him quick. Just a real quick slant play. Harker fires it out of there quick, that quick release. And in there on the tackle is a former Montana Grizz, J.R. Nelson back in the Treasure State. Had a chance to talk to J.R. He's excited to be extending his football career. Played with the Grizz from 2016 to 2001 during the Bob Stitt era. We'll hear more about him, but here is Swoboda behind Isaac Harker. Dwayne Brown split off here to the near side along with Dallas Dixon. Let's see who Harker likes. That's Dixon that goes in motion. He'll get the handoff, caught at the five, and the Wolfpack are there to stop him right at the three yard line. Yeah, host the Wolfpack right there to, to not let that run game go anywhere. Billings, you know, looking for some answers. It gets to the field, gets really, really tight inside here. So. Billings, quick slant early, running the ball right there. Third down and goal here. Dallas, Outlaw, Outlaws trying to get on the board early. And Dallas Dixon, number seven, one of three Central Michigan Chippewas on the Outlaws roster this year. 
Yeah, Jay, we talked about the Montana tie-in with Central Michigan. Jim McElwain, a Missoula product, head coach there now. There goes Dixon in motion. Harker's going to pitch it to Swoboda, and he gets upended. Nice tackle that time by Micaiah Lee out of Western Oregon, number six. Got underneath Swoboda, brought yep. him down. Nice, nice job by Lee right there. Just shooting the gap, sees the run play comes up from his defensive back position, makes a play there, holds Billings out of the end zone here. So it brings up a fourth down play early on in this game. See what, uh, see if this Wolf Pack can come up with a big goal line stand here, keeping Billings off the board. So Dwayne Brown returned the opening kickoff all the way down inside the 10. But Billings has been stymied from there. Right now it's fourth and goal, ball at the two yard line. Here goes Harker, drops back, throws it, nearly picked it's Lee off. again. Micaiah Lee. Just ran, that, we got a flag on the field. Let's check the flag. That was intended for Dallas Dixon. Anderson just running, or that's not Anderson, I'm sorry. That's Dallas Dixon running across there, but Lee able to close right there. There's no penalty for illegal blitz. The results of the play, incomplete pass, first down. All right. So Wolfpack come up with a big stop inside the five, bring out their offense, and Jay, you alluded to it. They're a little bit of a, a little bit of indecision at quarterback. They have the new, the new addition this week, uh, DeAndre Burrell. And with Burrell, you're right, but they're going to march out JT Taasi who's Ta been there starting, and they're under center. It's something you don't see much in the indoor game. And Tiasse sends a man in motion. And in the end zone, that looks, well, let's see if they say he had forward progress out they're across the They're going to mark it at the one he lost the yard. That give that time to number 45, Brian Sarnowski, the big fullback, but he was unable to get untracked, so that's Lost the yard. back inside the one. J.T. Tease out of Central Washington. He also played wide receiver in college, so he's played on both those positions. Pass intended over the middle, broken up. That's a Jason Armstrong, defensive back for the Outlaws. He's got his big hand in there. Yeah, Armstrong does a nice job posting up right there. Big long arms on the hitch route, just comes over the top, locks the ball down, brings up long third down here for Washington. Armstrong did a great job right there, not making contact with the receiver, affecting him in any way, just making a play on the ball. Really good defensive back play there for the for the Outlaws. Big number nine, like the tight end, Deshaun Williams. He's got a big body. We saw that time where the Outlaws were able to knock it away. So here it is, third, third and 11, ball inside the one. Piasse drops straight back, gets some pressure, and now he's going to be tackled in the end zone for a safety. Laquan Johnson Jr. coming off the edge hot. When a, another able, Central Michigan product. Wins, wins with speed right there and able to track down to Asi in the end zone. Got ourselves two points, Outlaws fans. So Billings couldn't find the end zone on offense, able to find it on defense and scores, well, just a quick two points, easy, easy uh, safety for the Billings Outlaws. And that's been a, a one of the strong suits of this Billings Outlaws team, Bobby, Bobby, is the defensive play. They've scored several defensive touchdowns, safeties. Not only that, but they're holding opponents. They've got the fewest points scored against them in the entire Arena League this year, Jay. So the, the, we talk about the offensive prowess of this Billings team, the stability that they have at quarterback. But this defense really has shown to be a real strong point of this entire Outlaws organization. Well, the scouting report on the Washington Wolfpack coming in said the offense has been inconsistent and the defense has been on the field too much. <laughs> and Tease has been under pressure and he has no time. And we saw that in their opening possession as he gets sacked for a safety by Laquan Johnson Jr. Lots so of equations to figure out up front for this Wolfpack. During the season, it has continued into their first possession here. And we get to see the kicker again, uh, Miss Strother. Yeah, Melissa Strother. Squibbed it the first time around. Arthur Anderson, along with Dwayne Brown, deep for the Outlaws. The ball's going to catch up, and this is Anderson with the ball at the 10. Has a wide open field, breaks a tackle across midfield, down to the 22-yard line. 
and the tackle made there by Kayla Brown, who played his college ball at Idaho State. Well, you're going to see a lot of the Northwest names on this Washington thing. We talked to Coach J.T. Wells, or I'm sorry, yeah, J.R. Wells. J.R. Wells, rather, before the game, and there's a lot of guys that are new to the arena, uh, arena football game. They're bringing the outside game indoors, so there's a little bit of an adjustment there, but Anderson right there, the return game for this Billings Outlaws team, I think it's just pin your ears back and go forward as fast as you can because both those guys returned it hard and downhill quick. All right, Derek Harvey, your split out wide receiver. Now he goes in motion. Again, Isaac Harker, the quarterback. Colorado School of Mines, where he did his college career. Won a lot of games there as Dallas Dixon comes down with the Harker pass. Nice quick hitch, good safe pass right there. Harker's done a nice job all season commanding this offense. Isaac Harker is 28 years old, and I mentioned it before, but I love it. He has a master's in econometrics, which <laughs> is, just means a lot of math. Uh, he also played in the Canadian Football League most recently with the BC Lions in 2022 and with the Saskatchewan in 2019. The Colorado School of Mines isn't an easy one to get into. That's true. Here goes Derek Harvey in motion. Harker looking and looking for a... Harvey in the end Great zone. Touchdown. Catch. What a catch. Derek Harvey hauls Har it in by one hand. Just pulls, puts that right hand out there, able to tip it to himself and catches it off the wall. Oh, we got a flag on the field, Jay. Illegal twist. Illegal twist on the defense. Here we go. That's going to that count. penalty has been declined. Results in a touchdown. So Isaac Harker finds Derek Harvey in the end zone. Uh, Caleb Brown was there defensively, but just a little bit. Uh, that was just an awesome one-handed catch. And it wasn't like Harvey was Harvey. wide open. The no, defender was right there. Harker, he wasn't Harker's first read either. You see right here, Harker pulls it down, wants to go down, down early, comes back to Harvey. He just sticks that right mid out there, tips it to himself, runs into the wall. We got six points on the board. Great camera work. And Bailey Giffen, the outstanding kicker for the Outlaws, splits the uprights. Timeout. And media. there you have it. First media timeout of the game. Nine to nothing lead by the Outlaws, courtesy of a safety. And then courtesy of an Isaac Harker to Derek Harvey touchdown pass. Here's some of the stats. And I, when I talk about the statistics in this league, they're a little hit and miss. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the uh, well, there's, league there's been is a little kind bit of, of there's been a little bit of uh, disruption. Exactly. <laughs> we'll just call it disruption. But you know, with with some of the inconsistencies that you're going to find in stats, Billings has really done a nice job of of being consistent in the effort and the output that they've had on both sides of the ball. Go ahead with your stats. Sorry, well, I was just Jay. saying, Isaac Harker has completed 66 percent of his passes, only two interceptions. So that's pretty good. He's uh, 65 of 98. He's thrown for 23 touchdowns. Looks like 24. Keep in mind these statistics. They may not be all the games. Uh, it looked like there were five games and the Outlaws have played six games, but at any rate, we do have some statistics and we can tell you he's completing 63% of his passes. They had one and game a, that was an exhibition. Yeah, and a very, very heady player with only two interceptions and over almost 100 pass attempts. That's yeah. a pretty good percentage. He's done a great job being very consistent, not taking chances with the ball. One of the things that, that really has separated Billings all year is their consistent play up front. Their offensive line has allowed Harker to you know, buy a little bit extra time. He's not your athletic quarterback that you see a lot in, in arena ball running around making plays. He stays back there, goes through his progressions really, really quickly, and then just throws up, and these guys are making plays. So Billings... You know, the, the recipe they have for winning football is working right now. So, you know, I know they came up short last week and they're looking for some answers this week, but they don't have to They don't have to make too many adjustments as that game with Nashville really was last play of the game in the end zone for a loss for their first loss of the season, but they're still in good standings here in the Arena League. And we'd like to thank Dan Dragon and Charlie Klepp for filling in on the broadcast while I was gone and uh, Bobby was down fishing off <laughs> the coast of Cancun. But at any rate, uh, they both said, you know, here, we miss one game, and they have like a barn burner that's decided in the last second. Most of our games have been blowouts, so we'll see how it goes here. So Bailey Giffen will kick off. Will he get a deuce? Here it is. Off, off the rebound net. That's a live ball with it coming out of him. That's Xavier Crawford, and he just barely got out of the end zone. Well, who made... Who initiated the tackle right there it was special teams ace Dwayne Brown that undercuts him. But right after that, not far behind is Jason Armstrong to finish him off. Watch this, Brown underneath. Armstrong finishes him off. That's that's right out of the WWE, which I, I believe the uh, Metro Park has hosted in the past. That was an awesome play. 
little teamwork. One guy goes, takes him down low, and the other guy waits for him to punish him into well, the... Coach Cedric Walker's got to be happy with the response early from his Billings Outlaws. A little bit of a hiccup on offense, but his defense is rallying to the ball very nicely early on here tonight. Here comes JT Tiase again under center. JT's handled most of the quarterback duties so far for... Here's the quick pass out to the far side. Deshaun Williams has it. Gets a quick two, three yards out to the four yard line. Yeah, Deshaun Williams, big body dude. They say he's 6'3", 205, but he's all a 220 pounds there, Jay. We saw him before the game. He's a good looking athlete. He's the type of guy you want getting off the plane or the bus, depending on how you travel here. You want him off first. Williams was on the uh, Seahawks. He was drafted by the Seahawks, got on their practice squad for a while. Played for the University of Washington Huskies and before that, Colorado State Pueblo. So he's got extending his college career. Now with a little indoor pro football. Here's a quick pass. Tiase finds J.R. Nelson, the Nelson. Former, former Grizzly. Nelson does a nice job finding the sticks right there, able to move and get a second set of downs, get a little breathing room away from the uh, their own end zone there. You see the chains crew there working real hard. J.R. Nelson, number 21, 6'1", 190. He's out of Hillsboro, Oregon. Played for the Grizz in 2016 to 2021. All right, in motion. Man, off the fingertips of Deshaun Williams as he did that cutting across the middle a little, little too high. Goes yeah. incomplete. Ossie ah, so just got rid of that one. Little extra out there, had Novak coming underneath, running a quick out, and then they had Williams running behind him. Asse just overthrew him a little bit there. Good coverage there by Billings. Tiasse played high school for Ballard High School on, in Washington and played wide receiver for the West Sound Rebels, a semi-pro team for many years, 2022-23. Now he's just gonna have to throw that out. Penalty flags fly. Pressure that dime by Siasi Finau for the Outlaws. Yeah, Finau just saw him escape the pocket and came vertical, putting pressure on Teasi, and he just had to throw the ball away. Holding on the defense, number 21, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. Well, that one goes against the Outlaws. And I think he was holding Nelson, who's also 21. So Armstrong holding Nelson. Gets another first down for Washington here. So the Wolfpack with their second consecutive first down in this possession. They are trailing 9-0 after giving up a early safety and then a touchdown. The Outlaws have the early lead here. But the Wolfpack trying to get things untracked offensively. Piasse drops straight back. Intended for Nelson. Defense there by Isaiah McFarlane for the Outlaws. Yeah, Nelson just running the shallow crosser. Tassie checks it down, just not able to hold on. As we had McFarlane right there on the spot, able to, able to knock Nelson off his feet. So second down here for the Wolf Pack. We should mention that the Iron Man rules are no longer in effect here in the AFL, so they're able to do as much substitution as they want. They shelved that Ironman approach shortly after the league decided they were uh, in trouble. Number of, and there's a pass to Deshaun Williams. Breaks the tackle and goes in for the score. And now you see the benefit of being a big human being. He just catches that. The defender over there misses the tackle and Williams off to the races. Big men that can move are in short supply, but in professional football, they are a commodity that is absolutely worth their weight in gold. Using that size advantage, Deshaun Williams puts the Wolfpack on the board. So here comes Melissa Strother to try the extra point. She's got quite the story herself. Melissa played 13 years in women's football. Played for the California Quake. And the ball, the kick is blocked, picked up. So the extra point is no good. Special teams play always important here in the indoor game. Timeout, media. So Strother that time, unable to get the extra point. 
That you was see Williams again. right there. Cedric Thomas. Williams right there, able to haul that ball in. Escape in there for a touchdown for the Wolfpack. Nine to six here in the first quarter. You're watching live Arena Football League action from TDS Fiber Field, Metro Park. We call it the Big Barn here in Billings. You can see some of the uh, activity for the fans here. It's a great thing about arena football is the, the fan, it's, it's much more inclusive for the fans. As you watch a, a dad here on Father's Day weekend, Jane, I want to wish all the dads out there, both of us are fathers, know how important our families are to us, but wishing all the fathers a happy Father's Day this weekend. Lots of sporting events. As we watch the second try here. Oh, denied. But happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there watching with their families. Let's see what happens to the uh, consolation prizes. I guess just a wave to the fans, Jay. I'll tell you, every time I think of Metro Park and Father's Day, I have to think of the Father's Day tornado. Oh, my in gosh, 2010 yes. that ripped this building apart, took the roof right off it. And we're so fortunate nobody died in that. But here we are back. Uh, most people in Billings will recall the video of the, the pickup truck being blown around here on the yeah. floor of, uh, of the Metro while the tornado ripped the roof off this building. That was in uh, June 20th, 2010, the famous Father's Day tornado that struck the Metro here in Billings. Well, I mean, people were, the, the video from that was pretty exciting because somebody's driving by the Metro watching the tornado on top of it. I, I mean, Montana tough is sometimes mixed up with Montana crazy, Jay. As we saw, <laughs> we saw Antonio right. Smiley get his big arm out there to block the straw there extra point, and then chaos ensued. No points after for the Wolfpack, so we're here 9-6. In the first quarter, 357 left. Melissa Strother kicks it deep into the end zone off the board. That's a live ball. Here comes Dwayne Brown with it, looking for some blocks. Breaks into the open. Has a man. Oh, he breaks into the 15 across midfield. Down inside, stays on his feet. And that is a 50 yard touchdown pass. We have a penalty flag down. Or a touchdown run, excuse me. What an effort by Dwayne Brown. Dwayne Brown, hard man to bring down right there. Broke a couple of open field tackles, made some people miss. Washington Wolfpack had a guy right on his tail bringing him down. Back during the return, number 44, half the distance to the goal, first down. So well, it's coming back, and you can tell by the crowd reaction, Jay, <laughs> they're not happy about it, but great individual effort. Let's watch it here. It'll be Breaks that first 44. tackle right there. Well, it looks like it's right, it was right there. And, I mean, you could say questionable or not, but you can't take away from the effort as Brown breaks that tackle. Should have been down there. Gets tripped up and hauled down in the end zone. All for naught, though, as Billings takes over first and 10 from the eight yard line. What a great effort. He's done a great job returning kicks early on here. Almost had one on a slant pass in the first play of the game offensively. They said it was a block in the back against Finau, but at any rate, that. Backs the Outlaws up. They're at their own seven now. There goes Brown in motion again. Harker tries a quick outlet pass to the side to Dallas Dixon, but short defense there by Armand Childs. So it'll bring up a second and 10. Now Harker looked like he was just getting rid of that ball. Maybe his guy has a chance just throwing it into the boards right there. Smart play. But I'll tell you what, both of these teams have some big offensive tackles. Yes, you're sir. See, you're gonna see over there number 55, McLean Dehova is 6'7", 319. And his counterpart, should something you know break out, Dominic Moore is all of that for those Washington Wolfpack. They got a couple of guys yeah. on this field today that stand out no matter where they're at in public. All right, so here's Arthur Anderson, the fourth in motion. And a pass across the middle to Dwayne Brown, Dallas Dixon rather. Dixon is loose across the 25, in down to the 23. Dixon just came out of came out of the, the, the left side of that offensive formation. Scott Free Harker able to identify that quick. He sees him right now. One pump just flips the ball to him and he's off to the races right there. You have to be impressed with Isaac Harker, the quarterback's quick decision making. He takes a couple looks. He doesn't have too much time to go through that progression, but he goes more through often his than reads not, finds very, very fast. Open. Yeah, you bet. 
All right, big number 99, Blake Mitchell in as the fullback behind Harker, and he's going to get the pitch. He's a big boy, but up to the task of tackle made by Tank Brewster. So we got Tank against Mitchell, a couple of Tanks. Yeah, well, Tank, and, and we were we were directed this very, very adamantly. That's his given name. He was born with that's on his birth certificate. <laughs> so Tank, not a nickname, Tank Brewster right there from his linebacker spot comes out and runs down big 99, Blake Mitchell. And Blake is just listed as an offensive or defensive lineman. And like Jay was saying, no Iron Man rules anymore. So he got his, uh, his, his offensive touch for the night so far, but actually lost a yard right there. You mentioned big number 55, McLean Jua with the Outlaws, 6'7", 319. On the opposite side, Dom Moore, he's equally that tall. Harker quickly back to pass, looking deep. Looks and five for the touchdown, Derek Harvey. Harvey streaking down, runs a corner route. Harker, very accurate passer. Just has a great arm for the Arena League. I mean, he, he knows where that guy's going to be the whole time, delivers that. And then I'll tell you what, Derek Harvey does a great job with his hands. All of our young perimeter players right here, watch Harvey's hands right here as Harker finds him, takes a pause, throws it into the corner. He goes up, reach and plucks that ball's a little bit behind him. Doesn't matter. Harvey goes up, grabs the ball, six points, Billings. And this Billings offense back on track early here after an early stumble. Being held out of the end zone by the Wolfpack. They're up 15 to 6, pending this one by Giffen. Bailey Giffen. Oh, oh, off the upright. Nine feet across to split those uprights, and That's that was the a end little of the tight. First quarter. End of the first quarter comes, and the Outlaws lead the Wolfpack 15 to 6 here at TDS Fiber Field, first interstate arena here in Billings, Montana. You're watching Arena Football. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Arena Football League action here on a Saturday night in Billings, Montana. Jay Cohn along with Bobby Beers. Thanks so much for joining us. It's the five and one Outlaws against the one and five Washington Wolfpack. Bobby mentioned earlier these two teams played back in uh, early May and it was the Wolfpack uh, falling in that one. Billings had the upper hand 49 to 12 in that first meeting. We'll see how they stack up here about a month later. Let me see a quick meeting in the stands, trying to figure out what we're going to get from the concession stand as Giffen gets ready to kick us off here in the second quarter. Xavier Crawford back deep along with Vincent Wilkerson. It's going to go off the boards, and that'll be Crawford in the end zone. Crosses the end zone stripe and gets out to the four-yard line where the, he actually lost his footing trying to avoid a hit. So the Wolfpack will put it in play up their own four-yard line. Trailing here, 15 to six, as we start the second quarter of action. That's a tough thing to do, field that ball off the net. Crawford does a great job just smothering that thing and then getting out of the end zone, getting a little, as much room as he possibly can. But Billings was down there swarming down around that end zone. Good coverage by Billings. So the last time the out, Outlaws were on defense, it was Deshaun Williams who hauled in the pass from Tiasse. Now Tiasse stays in as the quarterback. Head coach J.R. Wells told us uh, DeAndre Burrell might see some action, but right now they're sticking with Tiasse, who had a pretty good first quarter. Here's Deshaun Williams with a quick, quick out. Hit into the boards, and that'll be a pickup of about five, maybe six yards. Harvey was there to finish him off there at the end of the play, but you got a big dude like Mr. Williams right there. You got to call him Mr. because he's an intimidating dude and <laughs> in pads or out of pads, but... That quick hitter, and Williams is a big target. It's a nice safety blanket for any quarterback, somebody that size catching the ball. 
The Outlaws in the midst of a three-game homestand. Those are rare. Well, we got uh, Albany Firebirds, Albany six Fi and zero right now, leading the league and right hot in their tails as this building team. See if they can come out of this one unscathed again tonight. And they'll be here next weekend. Albany will. Here's another pass. This one complete to Vincent Wilkinson. He's loose on the sidelines and crosses the midfield stripe down to the 23-yard line. Vince Wilkerson, the second. He's out of Delta State, a native of Milwaukee. Wilkerson does a nice job catching the ball and getting downfield, and Jason Armstrong has to get in chase and clean it up on the back end for Billings, but not before a Wolfpack first down. Just a quick hitch, and then he just gets north-south quicks, makes a guy miss right there. Miss tackle. And then Armstrong in chase, Isaiah able to McFarland. put him into the board. It was number eight against number eight. The and Ocho. That one, it was Wilkerson that got the better of it. So well, Wilkerson's a, a big down. human too. They got a lot of a lot of good sized wide receivers on this Washington ball club. Piase in the shotgun now. In motion way. Ball's the on, the ground, on the ground, Jay. And the outlaws look like they have it, and they do. Blake Mitchell pounces on it at the 22-yard line. Blake Mitchell didn't get any yardage carrying the ball, but when the ball's on the ground. Mitchell's right there to recover it. A little bit of confusion in the backfield with Washington and a turnover. It's really costly as the snap was mishandled. And then you'll see Mitchell late just diving on the ball. Yeah, Teasse never got the handle. And by the time he looked up, the ball was on the ground and it was a free for all. So another turnover. This one will go to the Outlaws. And they are set up in pretty good field position at the Washington 22-yard line. Something like this happens. You like to say things in our position, Jay, like best field position of the night. But Billings' return game has allowed them some pretty good spots to start from as Harker and his charges start on the other side of the field. Here goes Harker. He's going to pitch it to Swoboda. Hunter Swoboda, leading rusher. Penalty flag flies near the end of it as Swoboda got up near the 21-yard line. And the Wolfpack are pointing towards the outlaws as they're the guilty party in this penalty, Holy we'll see. 55 on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, stays first down. That goes against McLean Juha of the outlaws. We talked about Juha earlier, how big he is. This time his big long arms get, get extended. He gets called for the hold there. Hunter Svoboda, he leads the league in Russian, Jay. Isn't that what you were telling me earlier? Yep, he does. According to our stats, he has 35 attempts for 140 yards and five touchdowns. He's a workhorse back there. The running game, most people in the Red League say it's not existent. Hunters will vote would probably argue with you right there. Now, I think Billings has some of the most rushing yards in the league. That pass complete from Harker. Arthur Anderson right there on the quick hitch. Harker again with the accuracy. And Anderson able to get down. Looks like back to first, uh, the right initial back yard started, marker. Absolutely. So second down and nine for this Billings offense. A late arriving crowd here at Metro Park as the Outlaws hoping to start attracting a, a steady flow of faithful fans. They've, Outlaws Nation has been a thing in Billings for a long time. This has been a, a challenging year both for the team and the fans as the schedule seems to change every other week. A pass from Harper, that's and that's Brown. another touchdown for Dwayne Brown. Dwayne Brown finally gets his touchdown, almost gets it on the kickoff. Gets another one where he gets hauled down in the end zone, and right there goes and makes a great athletic grab in the end zone. Able to adjust on the fly right there. Catches the ball out away from his body for another touchdown for this Outlaws offense. 22-yard touchdown pass from Harker to Brown. Little double move right there, streaking down the sidelines. Harker doesn't miss many guys that wide open. Dwayne Brown makes sure he doesn't at this time either. So I'll tell you what, Harker is money when it comes to finding his open man. You mentioned it. He's only thrown two interceptions all year. So here's Bailey Giffen. See if he can make good on this extra point. He does. Splits the uprights. And that'll be another point for the Outlaws as they extend their lead 22 to 6. Well, just when it looked as if Washington was getting their offense on track, Bobby, that fumble by Teose set the Outlaws up perfectly to take advantage yeah turnovers kill you it's, it's it's a hard thing to overcome when you're a struggling ball club like that the one thing that you can control usually is the ball and you know don't take chances with it and right there you know a fumbles especially on a snap one of those things you practice so often you kind of take for granted but i'll tell you what billings turned that around even overcoming a, a holding call early in that possession and able to put it in the end zone an all too familiar place for this billings offense 
Well, we'll see what head coach J.R. Wells decides when they come back out on offense if the Wolfpack will, will bring in DeAndre Burrell, who has quite a history both collegiately and in uh, indoor football. He just signed two days ago by the Wolfpack. We'll see if number 15 will get a shot right now. J.R. Wells was very excited to have that guy on his roster, just trying to get him kind of acclimated to, you know, their offense, number one. He's drinking through a fire hose trying to get everything, you know, Absolutely. terminology and all that. But I think the guy's been around long enough. He can probably read things out pretty quick from that position just with his history. Xavier Crawford back deep. Giffen kicks it deep. There and he, there's the deuce. The deuce. The uprights. That's his. Jay's favorite play in indoor <laughs> football right there, folks. Giffen leads the league in deuces. Off was kicked through the uprights by rule. Billings will be awarded two points. Ball will be placed at the five-yard line. First down, Washington. That he is, is a legitimate weapon. He is. Now, that's I was just going to You took the words right out of my mouth. We're becoming a pretty decent team, Jay. But Bailey Giffen, before the game, was routinely putting them into the uprights from back there on the line. That's a 60-yard field goal, Jay. He... He did it with ease, and you know there's a couple things you got to overcome. Number one's the scoreboard in the middle right. of the arena, <laughs> and then the ceiling isn't that far above that. And Giffen misses them both and puts it through the, through for two. Tiazzi, a quarterback. Yeah, Tiazzi stays in, and he's going to go deep and overthrows his intended receiver there. That's Max Novak, and the penalty flags fly. Yeah. That looks like it'll be called against Cedric Thomas. Yeah, that Crawford, right? The, you know, Crawford was his intended receiver, and, and Novak just. There I'm was sorry, no Cedric. reason for that. The ball was way overthrown. When are they going to pick it up? Maybe an uncatchable pass. Holding. Nope. Number four on the defense. Ten-yard penalty. It's automatic first down. They're well, not going to call pass interference. They'll call holding. So that goes against Cedric Thomas. Still moves the change, penalty on on Billings. Tassie just takes a shot, never a bad idea right there. And, you know, I got to think that if Cedric Thomas had his hips turned and was running with him, you know, that, that's probably right. a no call. Although he wasn't turned around, does impede the receiver's progress. Holding call, first down Wolfpack. And there goes Deshaun Williams in motion now. Piasse, he's going to fake the handoff and keep it. Across the 15, breaks the tackle. And into the boards, he'll be out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. So a uh, little mix it up. Let's see if they can handle a rushing quarterback. Well, he does a nice job here of making a guy miss. There's a defensive back comes up here. It's Jason Armstrong, misses him once, and then he's in pursuit, misses him again right there. And Tease showing some of that wide receiver background you talked about earlier, Jay. You know, moves the, well, moves, moves the down marker a little bit. Good pickup on first down, brings up second and four. Not a bad option to have a mobile quarterback in this game. Some offenses revolve around that. Billings isn't that way, but Washington right there showing a little bit of juice there on offense early on here in the second quarter. You see the score, 24-6. The Outlaws just got another two points from Bailey Giffen kicking off through the uprights for a deuce. Here's Tiase looking, looking, scrambles, has the man, and it's knocked out. Number eight, Vincent Wilkerson had his hands on it for a second. But uh, Cedric Thomas was right there in coverage. Does a nice job as you, as you see Teasi. Big number 11 right there gets in his line of sight and he has to kind of scramble to create a little time there. But big number 11, Laquan Johnson Jr. at 6'3", 256 pounds, gets in his sight line, makes him scramble around, brings up third down here for the Wolfpack. That Vincent Wilkerson's a pretty good sized young man too, 6'2", 205. He played for Delta State. Now here's Tiase back. Has to get rid of it quickly. Intended right below us here. Max, to Max Novak. Novak again. Now Novak, I got a chance to talk to him. He played his college ball at Linfield College out there in Oregon. Yeah, Lin but he was college. here last year. Personal he said he foul. played for the Topeka the Tropics passer. a year ago. Oh, 14. wow. It's 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Now and Billings, a costly penalty right there. Roughing the quarterback on Tiase. Linfield, McMinnville, Oregon, beautiful out there. Yes, this it Washington is. roster is littered with folks from the Pacific Northwest. Lots of tie-ins out there. Of course, Washington based in Seattle, but not afraid to dip down into that Oregon area to find some talent for this football team. So a couple big penalties have set up 
the Wolfpack nicely as they've got the ball at the Billings 19 yard line. Piasse back to throw, throws across the middle, it's complete. With the tackle made immediately there by Dwayne Brown. That was Cedric Thomas. I'm sorry, yep, yeah, you're Max right. Max Novak ran that little hitch route, little five yard hitch route. Tiasi scrambling a little bit. Getting a little bit of happy feet back there in the pocket. Gain of five, it'll bring up second and five. This Billings pass rush hasn't got home yet, but they're creating a little bit of problems protection wise for this Washington squad. Let's see what they call here on second down. Second and five. Man in motion, that pass quickly to Deshaun Williams and he's tackled immediately. I think he got back to the original line of scrimmage, but yeah. Outlaws had good defense on that one. That little quick hitter out to Williams. You're gonna see big number 11, Laquan Johnson, able to get back home from his defensive end spot. Billings defense rallying hard here. It looked like Sean Lewis had his first, the first shot out, and then his teammates finished the job. So that brings up third and five, ball at the 14 yard line. And the clock running now, you see 6.20 left here in the first half. The Outlaws on top, 24 to six. But Washington trying to get a little closer here. There goes Williams in motion, circles around. Parker drops back, gets some pressure, and he finds his intended receiver, good for a first down. Gonna be a first down right there. Good job finding the sticks by big number eight, Vincent Wilkerson. Didn't get any yards after the catch, but this was an easy decision for Taasi. Fires it out there, no yards after the catch. Great job on defense, Sean Lewis. Well, there's right. not much defense against that play. It was like bang, bang, and it's just right in his hands. Got to mention, I love the, the Wolfpack helmets. They are They've awesome. Got awesome uniforms. They are absolutely awesome. I, there's a lot of things in building a program. We talked to uh, Coach Wells early, and he, you know, there's a lot of things that they're doing right out there. They're trying to do this foundationally. They're do, trying some new things and building the team. One of the things they got absolutely right off the jump is that helmet. It is absolutely awesome. Piasse out of the shotgun. Look, and it's right in and out of the hands. Intended for Novak cutting across the middle. Defense for Billings that time was Jason Armstrong, but a ball just a little off the fingertips. Well, it was hot, coming in hot, downhill off of uh, Teasi's hands. Things are happening a little quick back there, it looks like, for uh, Mr. Teasi. JT is, uh, I don't know, you call it happy feet. In, in, this, in this game, things do happen so fast where you watch Harker just kind of go through things pretty calmly. Teasi, very good athlete. Sometimes that works to his advantage. Right there, just kind of got a little bit hurried with the throw. The head coach J.R. Wells got the play in to Teasi. We got Deshaun Williams split out here to the near side and now going in motion goes Novak. Teasi drops straight back across the middle. Intended for Deshaun Williams, another penalty flag flies. Well, Williams is one of those big guys that's not afraid of contact. And against these smaller DBs, they're gonna grab and hold when you push Holding into them. Number zero on the defense. It's half yards, half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Well, they're gonna say it's number zero, but uh, from our vantage Sean point, it, lo it looks like zero from the front side. From the back side, it's six. Well, the Outlaws wish that was zero. That would mean Karantz Higgins would be in the game, but he is, uh, with that injury suffered last week, is not active in this ball game. He usually wears number zero. Well, Williams there, you see that. He's running for contact against those smaller DBs, looking for a call like Timeout. that. Washington. Trying to create the a little space. first timeout of the half. This will also be the first media timeout of the second quarter. Well, I gotta say, the Outlaws have shot themselves here in the foot with these big, big penalties, three penalties in a row on this drive alone. Exactly. They extended a drive in the first quarter the same way, but you know we're gonna have to see how they respond here backed up against their own end zone. So we had a uh, hold call against the line for the Outlaws, and then two holding calls against them on uh, the pass department. 417 left. We're going to take a quick timeout. The score, you see it there, the Outlaws enjoying a big lead over the Wolfpack, but it's still early. Second quarter action will be back. When storms happen, storm chasers from out of state immediately follow. You've probably seen them running around town lately. My father has owned this company for over 20 years. I've been local my whole life, and we're going to be here long after the storm is over. 
Donahue Roofing offers an unprecedented lifetime warranty. We're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. We'll work with your insurance company to make it easy on you. When you need help, choose local. And call Donahue Roofing and Siding today. In a world where only the strong survive, one team stands above the rest. The Billings Outlaws. Get ready for the ultimate showdown where the gridiron turns into a battlefield. Are you ready to witness raw power, unrelenting spirit, and the true heart of champions? Join the Outlaws Nation and be part of a revolution. Don't just watch history being made. Be a part of it. Billings Outlaws. Defying the odds. Rewriting the game. You see the Outlaws. Welcome back to TDS Fiber Field here in Metro Park, Billings. You see the Outlaws already thinking playoffs as they're advertising the playoffs coming up. All right, let's see what if Washington can draw Pater here. Intended pass down in the corner for Max Novak, but overthrown by Tease. So on first down, it'll be incomplete. And it'll bring up second down. The ball now inside right at the five yard line well, you can see how close there's some suites on either end well, along the sidelines of the one side but you can see the fans lined up right there that the folks over there in the beer garden had a better chance at that than novak <laughs> did but to you know ha, uh, those crossing routes are hard to cover and especially if they're in man coverage you get him a shot but uh there's a guy over there right now celebrating that he's got a free ball courtesy of jt Tiasse. all right with the back in the backfield for extra protection. Tiase now is going to run it. Throws across the middle. In and out of the hand. That's Novak, Novak again. And Armstrong right there on the spot. Does a great job catching up late. Billings defense getting home up front there. Is they're flushing Tiase almost every time right now. And Novak unable as, as we see again. Armstrong making a nice play making sure that they buy one more scoreless down here, but Washington knocking on the door here in the third, second quarter rather. Armstrong, 5'8", 155, gives up quite a bit of size to these big receivers, both Williams and Wilkerson. He hasn't been matched up against Williams yet. <laughs> Tiasse sends Novak in motion, and in the backfield, Tiasse is set. Big number 11, Laquan Johnson Jr. He has a safety already in the game, and yeah. now a sack. Well, he's doing a great job from that defensive end spot, using his length to his advantage, and right there, no place for JT Teasse to go. And big so number 11, oh, Johnson. Down. So they had it first and goal at the five, and they backed him up. John that Johnson did a good job there, Jay, of staying home. They ran that off, that, that quarterback keeper earlier with Teasse. Johnson stayed home, wasn't fooled a second time. Good job on his part. Brings up a big fourth down for the Wolfpack. All right, so Tiase has big Deshaun Williams split out this side, Wilkerson the other side, and Cedric Williams, or Cedric Walker rather, calls timeout for the Outlaws. He saw what was happening. Timeout, Did not like the Their setup they had. The no, he, he did a good job. He's pretty animated right there. He make, getting, things, getting things lined out right here. We're going to take a quick break. 24-6 with two minutes to go here towards halftime. The Outlaws lead it. We'll be right back. When storms happen, storm chasers from out of state immediately follow. You've probably seen them running around town lately. My father has owned this company for over 20 years. I've been local my whole life, and we're going to be here long after the storm is over. Donahue Roofing offers an unprecedented lifetime warranty. We're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. We'll work with your insurance company to make it easy on you. When you need help, choose local. And call Donahue Roofing and Siding today. Back live here in the Metro, Billings, Montana. Jay Cohn along with Bobby Beers. Billings Outlaws right now leading 24-6. It's fourth down for the Washington Wolfpack. Can the Wolfpack punch it in here? They've done a good job up to now. They've had three defensive penalties against the Outlaws up to now. Here's a quick pass to Novak across the five, but he's tackled before he makes it into the end zone. Hey, I'll tell you what, this Billings defense sees the screen develop. They're using Williams as a blocker right there. And Cedric Thomas, it was his job to clean this up. They get their wide receivers blocking out. The screen pass to Novak. And then right there, I'll tell you what, Cedric Thomas does a great job just making sure he doesn't have to 
destroy him or blow him up. Just get him to the ground before he gets in the end zone, does his job. The Billings defense bends but not breaks, keeping the Wolf Pack to a six-point total so far in this first half. Great job by the Billings defense rallying to the ball. Absolutely, especially after three consecutive uh, holding it, penalties against been their them. Own worst enemy. Yeah. They really have. It just the penalties killing them, allowing those Washington drives to continue right there. But bow up, stopped Washington, and now starting their offensive deep in their own end zone here. Here goes the pass. Arthur Anderson catches it. He's close to first down yardage across the 10, out to the 11, maybe the 12 yard line. Looks like he might have enough. No signal yet from the guys in stripes. I should have wore stripes today, Jay. Anderson has a couple of touchdowns on the year. Five uh, receptions Offsides for 45 yards. on the defense, yards. number 92. That penalty has been declined. Results of the play is a first down. So it was enough for a first down. The penalty is declined. See if the Outlaws can take advantage here in the last minute 16 of this first half. has been a fast-moving first half as most AFL games are. Clock continually runs till the final minute of the half. We'll see how clock management comes into play right now. Clock is running now, and in motion goes Dwayne Brown. Here's the give to Swoboda. Billings content to run this one. He gets up to the 14-yard line. Hunter Swoboda, they call him the Swiss Army Knife, or the, he, he does so many things. Washita Baptist College timeout. out of Arkansas Media. is where Hunter Swoboda Final went to college. Of the half. He does a great job in protection. He fits very, very well and cleans up a lot of stuff, and, and he's not a bad runner with the football in the arena game. Another quick break coming your way. 24-6, the Outlaws lead it. We'll be right back. Oh, hey there. Are you drinking out of a regular cup? Why, when you can have a loud cup? You can be loud and then have a sip. It's not loud in here, so where's my cup? Go out loud! Yeah! Let's go! Not all replacement windshields are created equal. At Econoglass, we install windshields that are made to a car manufacturer's original specifications. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next windshield installation. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Remodeling your bathroom? Econoglass can transform your home with our Lumax shower doors. Designed for strength and stability and typically installed in one day or less. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next shower doors. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Back to the live action, 53 seconds till halftime. The Outlaws trying to take advantage after a defensive stop. Pass complete to Arthur Anderson across the 20. Finally hit across the 15. Tackle made by Brandon Wellington, but not before the Outlaws pick up a first down and the clock will stop at 46 seconds now as they set it in play. The clock continues to run down yeah. to 40 seconds. You see. You see Wellington just coming in pursuit and behind that play just cleaning it up, forcing Billings to take another play here. And there goes Anderson in motion again. Harker looking for him into the corner, overthrows him just a bit as he hammers into the boards along with J.R. Nelson playing defense that time where he played for the Montana Grizzlies in the defensive backfield. Yeah, former Grizz right there on defense right there. Harker misses his guy in the end zone. Nelson in that transition from uh, Stitt to Delaney Right. In those of the you know Grizz Nations out there, they might recognize that. He was part of the the eventual evolution into you know the national championship. Uh how do you want to say that? They run they, they, this past they, year. They, they were play yeah, they, they they made a run all the way to the championship game, but Nelson, a former Grizz, back on the field here in Billings. Anderson again is in motion. Let's see if Harkin can find him this time. Look for him, find him. Incom incomplete, but two penalty flags fly. They're going to get Makaya Lee yeah, there. He's disputing pass, that call. Pass interference not happy at all. I don't know that you're going to ever find a defensive pass back that's going to admit that. Number six on the defense, previous spot, half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. All right, so they're going to place the ball at the seven-yard line. And the Outlaws will have 21 seconds left here. Well, we know that that's plenty of time to, to go the length of the field in arena ball, right, Jay? After last week, Billings did learn clock management's important. And yes. you got it, it's all the way down to the last tick, and they did put some time back on, 21 seconds here for the Outlaws. 
Let's see what Cedric Bonner, the offensive coordinator, wants to do here. Harker back to pass, throws. Touchdown, Outlaws! Arthur Anderson. And Anderson with a little bit of, uh, he's going to get an unsportsmanlike here. Throwing the ball back in the face of Makaya oh. Lee. But not before Billings put some more points on the board. They're not going to take those off the board. The results of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike, number one on the offense. That penalty will be enforced after the kickoff. All right, so there you heard it, after the kickoff. Little excessive celebration, maybe taunting, throwing the ball in the face. But uh, Harker to Anderson, six points for the Outlaws, and here's Bailey Giffen to see if he can add the, the seventh point. Add to the 30-point total so far. Snap is down, and it's blocked. Blocked by the Washington Wolfpack. I believe that was uh, Wellington there. Parker is actually the holder as well. So 17 seconds left. It's still enough time for the Wolfpack to score. In case you missed last weekend against the Nashville Cats, Billings scored to take the lead back with 18 seconds to go. Well, that was enough time for Nashville to go the length of the field and score with one second to go to upset the Outlaws last weekend. Bobby, when you said one of the storylines, how will the Outlaws rebound after a heartbreaking loss like that? They're leading 30-6 to six at halftime. I think uh, we can rest assured they righted the ship. Yeah, I, you know, there probably wasn't that much to fix, right? That, that's a good game. Nashville Cats, long-storied history in the league. And, you know, they, they're under new leadership with Jeff, uh, Jeff uh, Fisher. Uh, the new commissioner and head coach in Nashville. There's a lot of stuff always going on in the Arena League. So, you know, these guys being able to kind of put that one behind them tonight and then, you know, putting some points on the board, just kind of pick up where they left off. It wasn't for anything other than unable to finish the game. And it, these guys love to play, and it, it's been apparent tonight. All right, Giffen kicking off again. Off the board, goes right off x man Crawford in the end zone. He's not he going to get, get out. He did not get out. And that's going to be more points for That Billings. starts with that kick right there. You talked about Bailey Giffen being a weapon. And him right there just kind of, you know, throwing a lob wedge at the bottom of that net. And now we've got, now we've got extracurriculars. Coach, we got guys leaving the bench. We got guys jogging down. <laughs> Went from arena football to playoff hockey in a <laughs> blink of an eye right there, Jay. Things there are, is that. Here it is again. Just right, right there off the iron at the bottom. That's hard to field anyways, coming off the net, let alone the iron. And then Crawford. that swarming Billings coverage team right there. We saw him get down there earlier that time. No breathing room for X-Man yeah. Crawford. Let's see what the call is. The officials are talking it over. The head coaches are down there. Finau is the one who made the tackle against the X-Man, Xavier Crawford. Well, they definitely tackled hey, him. The after, the, after the play, there are two penalties, one on each team. There you go. Unsportsmanlike, number eight on Billings. Unsportsmanlike, number seven on Washington. Those penalties offset. However, the previous unsportsmanlike penalty on the touchdown will be enforced from the 10-yard line, first down Washington. That's a lot to, lot to swallow right there, Jay. So we had offsetting penalties on the kickoff, but there was an offsetting penalty after the touchdown. And so that's what's being assessed here against Billings. And so no points or anything exchanged in that explanation. And it's first down Washington at the 20 with 17 seconds left here in Billings, the first half. Billings did get the one point because Washington did not get out of the end zone on the right. kickoff. So that's how we ended up with 31 to six. 17 seconds left. Motion on the Billings line. They'll be called for offsides. Tiase is gonna run it now and just throws it out of bounds to get rid of it, but it'll be offsides against the defense if it, my eyes prove correct. Yeah. So in arena football, if they kick it, it hits the rebound offsides. net and you don't get it out Number of the end zone. Number 10 five-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. If you don't get it out of the end zone on the kickoff, that's a one-point for the, the kicking team. And the that's third exactly man in the booth tonight, there. Jay, is our official. 
All right, our head guy right there is getting a lot of air time. This second quarter has been his quarter to shine. They've done a nice job of keeping things under wraps and, you know, kind of, I don't know, refereeing whatever's going on on the field right. tonight. That's their job. Lots of penalties, lots of action all over the board tonight here in Billings. That's Mr. Clunch is our head referee. Timeout. Another Billings. timeout. They're second and a half. All right, so with 10 seconds to go, let's just keep it here. We were a little concerned how Billings might rebound after that heartbreaking loss. I think we can rest assured. We have not seen DeAndre Burrell. I see him over in the uh, Washington Wolfpack bench area. It'll be interesting to see if they break out this new quarterback in the in the second half, who has quite a history in indoor football himself. Yeah, he played with the Sabercats. Long storied history in the early league. They're not back this year. We'll see what happens in the future, but Burrell, had a lot of success here. They bring him in pretty confident in his abilities. The biggest question is, is he able to pick it up? Whatever, Please you know. Please put 30 points on the score. 30 points for Billings. Another co correction from uh, Mr. Clonch right there. But, yeah, Burrell, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, him digesting the playbook all throughout the game, talking protection there with the lineman earlier, as we saw him on film. So... They take that point away from Billings. Ten seconds left. Tiasa going to go deep into the corner. Whoa! And flipping over the board. Right over there in the Dave's hot chicken area. <laughs> that was Wilkerson. Both Wilkerson and the defender for the and Outlaws. That's Armstrong. Went Armstrong's right over the boards. Been all over here as he just launches this one deep ball neither one of those guys can get it but they both went into the stands as you, you see the folks right there got a grandpa there protecting his grandson folks over there still making adjustments to their booth or their suite that excitement gets up close and personal here in arena football folks this could be the last play of the half four seconds left piace getting some pressure and he's going to be That's sacked Finau right there Relentless in his pursuit right there. Pays off right there to end the half. That's the end of the first half. Well, All right, and it's from been a while than Woolley first half as well. 30 to six. The Outlaws lead it by 24 at the break as the teams head to their respective locker rooms. I would not be surprised to see uh, J.R. Wells make a shift in quarterback for the second half. We'll have to wait and see. But we're at halftime. The Billings Outlaws have to like how things have gone so far. They're up by 24, leading the Washington Wolfpack 30 to 6. More of our halftime activities coming your way after this break. Putting new roofing or siding on your home is not just about slapping on shingles. It's an engineered system. Hi, I'm Mitch Donahue, and this is my son Dylan. We're proud to be local experienced contractors using the best materials around. We don't just meet code requirements, we exceed them. Your new project is an investment. With Donahue Roofing and Siding, you can put your money into your home where it belongs. Why not use the best? Call Donahue Roofing and Siding today. Oh, hey there. Are you drinking out of a regular cup? Why, when you can have a loud cup? You can be loud and then have a sip. It's not loud in here, so where's my cup? Not all replacement windshields are created equal. At Econoglass, we install windshields that are made to a car manufacturer's original specifications. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next windshield installation. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Remodeling your bathroom? Econoglass can transform your home with our Lumax shower doors. Designed for strength and stability and typically installed in one day or less. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next shower doors. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Yeah, so we can come. Do a leap, huh?
All right, welcome back to halftime. It's the Billings Outlaws leading the Washington Wolfpack 30 to 6. Jay Cohn along with Bobby Beers. Some impressions of the first half. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this first half. And it didn't take long as the Outlaws started things off with a safety. Yeah, right off the bat there, we watch big number 11, Laquan Johnson Jr. He did a great job all half using his hands, escaping the rush or escaping the pass protection right there. Comes up with the safety. And then Harker, he's always very accurate with the ball. He just throws it right into the corner of the end zone. The big one handed grab right there by Derek Harvey. Gets Billings offense on the board there. And then you see Dwayne Brown, who played all over, making a great play on special teams right there, barely getting the Washington Wolfpack out of the end zone. And the Wolfpack right there, their big number nine, Williams, able to escape the tackle and then taking his big body into the end zone right there. That's a big drink of water, yeah, Jay. That was the big highlight of the first half for Washington. Here's Melissa Strother, the only yeah. female kicker in the league. And this is going to be blocked. Big number 94, Antonio Smiley right there. Puts his arm out. And then Brown again with the big return right here. Look Escapes at one the guy. individual effort here. Now, unfortunately, fans, this is going to be called this back. This gets called back, but he escapes one tackle, then two tackle. Drags this guy for a bit. Spins out of that one. Number six has a shot at him. Does drag him down. He does find pay dirt. Gets called back on a hold or a block in the back call. Great individual effort by Brown. And then Harker again. Simply on the money right there again to Harvey. Derek Harvey's had a heck of a first half. And Dwayne Brown also got into the action as well. But you can see this action is a pretty much nonstop. 30 to 6. The Outlaws have to be tickled to death of how things have gone here in the first half. Well, and keep in mind, they're missing Karantz Higgins, who had over a dozen touchdowns so far yeah. in the season. Big shoes to fill. Well, and Billings has done that not just with one person. We've seen Harvey have a big uh big half in the end zone right there but Dwayne Brown's done a nice job they've, they've picked up a couple of great individual efforts from a, a lot of folks so it's not just one person that stepped up for this Billings offense uh, you know and, and with Harker commanding the quarterback spot it's it's really you know just don't screw up and catch that ball because it's going to be on you pretty quick here and uh, the defense has been outstanding Absolutely for the outlaws yeah. as well headlined by Laquan uh, Johnson. Laquan Johnson, not only did he get a sack for a safety, he got a sack out here at midfield that pretty much stymied a Wolfpack drive. He's done a great job. That that Billings defense has done a great job getting pressure upfield and, and, and really keeping JT Tiasse, you know, really off balance. Off balance, very uncomfortable. And, you know, they did get burned the one time with Tiasse, you know, showing how athletic he was, but then they started staying home on the backside of that. Billings really has done a nice job defensively bouncing back from last week's last second loss, Jay. J.R. Wells and company of the Washington Wolfpack come in, scored only six points in the first half. That's not going to get it done against the homestand Billings Outlaws. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk with Outlaws owner Stephen Titus. We'll get an update about the playoff situation here in the AFL. Don't go away. Just go over and tap him on the shoulder. Here. Not all replacement windshields are created equal. At Econoglass, we install windshields that are made to a car manufacturer's original specifications. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next windshield installation. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Remodeling your bathroom? Econoglass can transform your home with our Lumax shower doors. Designed for strength and stability and typically installed in one day or less. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next shower doors. Get quality. Get Econoglass.
Hi, I'm Mitch with Donahue Roofing and Siding here in Billings, Montana. Whether you have storm damage and you need a professional to help you with your insurance claim, or you just want to spruce up the outside of your home with a new look, call the professionals at Donahue Roofing and Siding today and we will be happy to come and help you with your project. We have the expertise to help you make the decisions on which siding and roofing is right for your project and your budget. Call us today. And wel welcome back here at Halftime, Jay Cone, joined by Stephen Titus, the owners of the Outlaws. We're keeping an eye, Stephen, on this. We have the Albany Firebirds coming in next week here, and they're undefeated right now, really in a tough battle with uh, the, who are they playing? Orlando, Orlando Predators. The Orlando Predators. Yep. And it's 49-48 uh, uh, Albany with four minutes left. It's a great game down there, or up there in Albany, New York tonight. So that'll be interesting to see if the, the Firebirds come in undefeated, or maybe they'll have one loss. You never know. We found out last week. You can't leave them very much time on the boards. Let's talk to Steven. You have to be happy how the team has responded after that uh, heartbreaking loss last week so Ab far. Absolutely. You know, the fact of the matter is the Outlaws played their hearts out last week. Win or lose, I mean, how many Super Bowl teams have, have won throughout the season? It takes a, a pressure that's not needed for the Outlaws. You know, uh, it's a character we, builder. Exactly. You don't get a trophy for a perfect season. You get a, pro, a trophy for winning a, a championship game, an arena bowl. And that's what we're focused on. We're not focused about a perfect season. We're focused about making the playoffs and winning the arena bowl on July 19th. Let's talk about those playoffs because the league this past week announced kind of the format. And it'll start off with the fourth and the fifth seeded teams in the league playing each other. And that'll be the first weekend in June on the July 5th or 6th, we're not sure yet. Yeah, it depends on which uh, seed ends up getting the home game and where they have arena availability at. But when we decided the five-team format, we kind of looked at the current standings. Uh, we looked at uh, trying to minimize expenses for the teams. And this kind of five-team format made sense. We have a very top or a tight top five right now. The right. standings are extremely close. So every point, every game becomes so much more crucial and so much more exciting for the fans and for the players and for the team. So when we decided the five-team format, we thought that was in the best interest of the league, and it's going to be a, it's going to be quite the run the next three weeks. So that first week will be the number four team against the number five right now. That would be the Predators against Southwest Kansas. The winner of that would go on to play the top seed, which right now, if Albany continues their undefeated season, that would be it. Right, right now, it looks like Billings, we've secured a playoff spot. The yes. question is, Will the Outlaws be one, two, or three? I guess it's still up for grabs. Right. We're doing everything we need to do to secure that number two seed. We want that home game on July 12th. Right now it's looking like Salina will be up here uh, on July 12th. But, you know, we still have two weeks of football left after this game. Hopefully we can secure the win tonight and focus on going 1-0 this week and 1-0 again next week uh, against Albany. And I cannot underestimate this Albany game. This is the game that America wants is Billings and Albany. Right. Is Billings for real or is Billings just have this – uh, fakeness to us and I, I can tell the arena football world Billings is for real and you know what we're going to see a heck of a game next Saturday night at TDS Fiber Field at Metro Park. We can hardly wait for that of course the the effort and the whole focus is on making the Arena Bowl 33 and that comes up July 19th at a date a neutral site yet to be announced and, and, so. the, and the Arena Football League is going to be making an announcement on that next week uh, Chris Chetty uh, the president of AFL and the group uh, the G6 Sports Group just wait until they make this announcement next week. This is going to blow everyone's head out of the water. I mean, this is going to be so exciting, this game that they've been planning. It's going to be unlike anything Arena or Indoor Football has ever seen. So G6 is making their mark on the arena and indoor football industry very quick. It's going to be a gr great announcement they're making here next week. Lots of things for the fans to keep abreast of. And let's talk about the rest of the schedule. We have all the next week. Yes. Then we have... We're going to play Salina again before the playoffs, it looks like. Right. It looks like we're going to have Salina in Salina uh, in two weeks. And then we Salina, as of right now, looks like they would come back two weeks after that. It looks like we'll get a first-round bye over Independence Day weekend. But that next weekend, uh, as of right now, Salina would be here. Um, and it's going to be a great game. Coach O'Neill is going to be coming right. back to Billings. It's got the Horan O'Neill connection continues to uh, uh, kind of be a – a fun thing with the outlaws because he got his start here he still lives in town he comes back and he's uh, one of the top competitors in the league it's always fun to play his teams absolutely it's always a great game and i can tell you that coach o'neill watching him over the last few, few years he has a beginning of the year team a middle of the year absolutely. team <laughs> and an end of the year team and he's putting together that end of the year team right now to make that playoff run he makes every year well 
Steve, just final thoughts as, uh, as you enter the last few weeks of the regular season, looking forward to the playoffs. Uh, Billings needs to come out and support the team. Absolutely. That's what we need. We need this loud crowd. We need that ninth man. We need that home field advantage that we know Billings can do. We're trying to bring back the championship days of the Billings Outlaws when we were winning the IFL championships. Now we're going to do it when winning AFL championships, but we need that ninth man. I mean, last week, I have never heard it so loud at the end of that game against Nashville. And then that pin, you can hear a pin drop right. at that last play of the game. What an amazing game. Um, great kudos to um, Nashville on winning that game. But you know what? Build us some character. We practiced this week. You know, the guys felt what it felt like to lose. We haven't lost all season. I don't think the guys want that again. So I'm looking forward to this Billings end of the year run for an Arena Bowl 33 we title. We all are. We all are. Steven Titus, our guest here at halftime. Thanks for joining us. It's all Billings here in the first half. They're up 36, 30 to 6 over the Washington Wolfpack. And we'll have that second half action for you coming up right after this. All right. Thanks, Jay. Awesome. awesome. Appreciate it. Okay. Not all replacement windshields are created equal. At Econoglass, we install windshields that are made to a car manufacturer's original specifications. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next windshield installation. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Remodeling your bathroom? Econoglass can transform your home with our Lumax shower doors. Designed for strength and stability and typically installed in one day or less. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next shower doors. Get quality. Get Econoglass. When storms happen, storm chasers from out of state immediately follow. You've probably seen them running around town lately. My father has owned this company for over 20 years. I've been local my whole life, and we're going to be here long after the storm is over. Donahue Roofing offers an unprecedented lifetime warranty. We're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. We'll work with your insurance company to make it easy on you. When you need help, choose local. And call Donahue Roofing and Siding today. In a world where only the strong survive, one team stands above the rest. The Billings Outlaws. Get ready for the ultimate showdown where the gridiron turns into a battlefield. Are you ready to witness raw power, unrelenting spirit, and the true heart of champions? Join the Outlaws Nation and be part of the revolution. Don't just watch history being made. Be a part of it. Billings Outlaws. Defying the odds. Rewriting the game. They flip that around and I... And we are back. It is halftime here at the first interstate arena, Billings, Montana, Metro Park, TDS Fiber Field. Take your pick of names. It's the big barn and right now, the homestanding Billings Outlaws enjoying a 30 to six lead over the Washington Wolfpack here at halftime. Of course, uh, these two teams met earlier in the year. We mentioned that uh, for fans, but back in uh, early May, it was Billings defeating Washington 49 to 12. So right now, a similar scenario playing out. The question is, what will Washington do at quarterback here in the second half? Uh, JT Teasse had a fairly productive first half, but obviously six points is not going to get it done. And just this past week, the Wolfpack announced the signing of uh, DeAndre Burrell who has had quite a career, the number two passing all time at Utah State. He played in the NFL, time with Green Bay, Tampa, Tennessee, and with the San Jose Sabercats as well. In 2015, Burrell, his coach was Cedric Walker. They got a championship back then. So an interesting sidelight here as the Outlaws kick off in the second half, leading by 24. And Bailey Giffen tries for the deuce, but he can't get it. Picked up there by Crawford. And another penalty flag flies. Crawford just get it out across the end zone stripe. Uh, avoid being tackled in the end zone. Well, Crawford right there. There's a lot of adjustments that have to be made with that oblong ball. And right there, barely able to get the handle on it before exiting the end zone. Just getting outside. Looks like they're going to put him down on the one or the two yard During line. During the return, holding number 11 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Jazz Rashid getting his name called for the wrong reasons there is. Washington very, very close to their own end zone as we saw Crawford just kind of 
lose his feet as you hear some loud cups as they go by here. Big seller here tonight at the big barn. <laughs> that was our head referee, Aaron Clonge, always does a fine job. He keeps control of the game once again. And we have DeAndre Burrell in as quarterback, number 15. You can see him there in the shotgun. Well, let's see how he does. Quick. Gets out to Deshaun Williams, and he's a big drink of water to bring down across the five-yard line out to the seven. Yeah, Cedric Thomas at 5'10", 170 maybe, but that's, that's a tall order for Cedric to bring down Deshaun Walt Williams, who's, you know, all a 204 on our on our uh, uh, sheet here that we kind of made up ourselves, but, you know, that, that's a battle that he's not going to win very many times. Timeout officials. Officials timeout as we've got a... That's Thomas Cedric right there. Thomas that's shaking up for the outlaws. Sitting down for a sec. Coach Walker's over there tending to him real quick. A little more about DeAndre Burrell. Most recently won a title with the Arizona Rattlers in 2017. He's 35 years old. So he's <laughs> much older than I would say. He's not the older, oldest quarterback in the building, though, Jay. No. The Jay's favorite quarterback, folks. I'll, go ahead. Just take it away. Well, my favorite quarterback is our backup quarterback for the outlaws, Daniel Southwick. He's 42 and he's about to get a PhD. He's about to be Dr. Southwick. He's got two master's degrees. He's been playing. He's got more Arena League jerseys in his closet than dress shirts. At one point, over 13 years, he moved 20 times. So we have to, I'm hoping he, he has not played a snap for the Outlaws yet. Every game. But he might. Folks, tonight. every game we do, Jay's only request and hope is that he gets into the game. What so. a great story. <laughs> and his mom married larry king there so we go his, his uh, <laughs> stepfather was larry king yes the larry king so <laughs> daniel southwick is the story uh, all to himself as there we see jr nelson take the story take the uh, take the ball up past the first down washington able to get a first down here as as we learn more about our backup quarterback from jay <laughs> and i've watched daniel southwick warm up he's got a really good passing motion but he is 42. If you've hung around any sort of professional football, whatever level for as long as he has, you have to have some residual value. So uh, he, he's, it, his it, whole he's out of school. Yeah. None of these guys are in class, so he's not helping with anybody's homework. So he's got to be at least functional at the quarterback spot. All right, here it is. First down for the Wolfpack. And there is Burrell is going to keep it. And he's hit right away. That's Finau. See, I'll see Finau. Finau uh, ended the half with a quarterback sack. Picks up where he left, left off right there. So I, well, I guess I'm going to give Burrell a yard there on the keeper. But Burrell at 35, that's not that old in our book, Jay. Still uh, has some. Still has a little juice. He's a youngster. Are you kidding me? Exactly. No gray hairs. No gray hairs. And he's only been with the team for two days. They announced on Thursday that he was joining the team, and here he is. So he's got to be a quick study. And right now it's like trailing 30 to six. Why not put him in and see what he can do? Exactly. That's such great success throughout his career. A couple of hits like that last one, though, he might be thinking twice about coming back. In motion. That was Max Novak. And Burrell's going for Novak. Little shoving going on, but no flags fly. Novak up against number 21, Jason Armstrong. Had a little hand battle going on down the field yeah nothing that nothing call worthy right there as armstrong was in tight coverage but you know and novak's going back to say hey just lay that one out that was a little bit on the line right there but you know it's good there's a lot of folks that uh mr burrell doesn't know in his own huddle right now let alone the playbook so he's still trying to figure things out a little you know like i, I reference drinking through the fire hose but at 35 years old and been around is, is there's not much left tread left on the tires but what's left there's value in the experience that he's had there, Jay, and that's really what Washington's looking for here. So Burrell talking with one of the wide receivers, J.R. Nelson. There goes Max Novak in motion. And Burrell's trying to hit Novak, but overthrows him. So he's a little rusty coming off the bench. Well, Hasn't played from, for a while. From team to team, those exit angles out of, out of your break, that, that, that differs from team to team and, and where they're looking for. As you see right here, he's not familiar with his receivers. It's a good ball, but... Novak comes out, it, you know, if he just keeps, if he keeps that higher, if he keeps that angle higher, he can run underneath that ball. You keep it at a sharp angle, and now the quarterback has to be right. So give your give your quarterback a chance there. Keep that angle high out of the break, 
and run under the ball. That's what Hart, that, that's what Billings does so well is they'll keep their, their routes high out of the break. And then Har Harker just throws underneath and then they go get him as we see a nice long field goal attempt here. Yeah, Melissa Strother is going to try like a 42, 47 yarder. It'll be collared in the end zone. Here comes the outlaws. Brown, Brown always dangerous with the ball. The the Fumbles ball is it. Loose on the field, and it looks like the Outlaws may have recovered. Dwayne Brown lost the handle right at the end. Yeah, ran right into Big Jake Oliphant, big number 55. He stripped the ball, and then Brown scrambled back to get it. So that was a 42-yard field goal attempt by Melissa Strother. Came up quite a bit short, but it was just as good as a punt. There are no, There's no punting no, in there, the AFL. There's no punting in arena football, Jay. <laughs> no punting in football. So... But Dwayne Brown always dangerous with the ball in his hands. We've seen him a number of times in the return game get positive yardage right there. Almost lost once for Billings, but able to scramble. His motor's always running. Brown able to recover it, and Billings on the Washington side of the football field here to start this drive in the second half. Another defensive stop for these outlaws. Those are huge in the indoor game. There goes Harker, going to straight back to path. A little two move action. Open. Touchdown, Arthur Anderson, the fourth. Oh, alone. I'll tell you what, Arthur Anderson put a move on Caleb Brown. I'm glad that Caleb turned around and found him because he looked a little bit lost on that. But Arthur Anderson does a great double move right here. That that hitch moves that Billings has come out with, set that up all game long, and then Harker just lays the ball up, and Anderson runs underneath it. Runs underneath it. For another six here for Billings coming out in the second half. Isaac Harker, he has such a good pass. <laughs> just led it perfectly and picked up another touchdown pass. I believe his fourth of the game. Now Harker will hold here as Bailey Giffen tries to split the uprights on the point after. And he does. So the Outlaws draw first blood here in the second half. Add to their lead. They now lead it 37-6. Yeah, Billings picking up right where they left off at the end of the first half. No hiccups or hangovers from last week's, you know, really tragic loss. And Billings just kind of, you know, moving forward as, as you know, Washington doesn't have any answers to, despite who they're putting at quarterback right now. And this Billings defense isn't the best one to kind of figure things out against. Well, you mentioned, Bobby, that Billings comes in the stingiest defense in the AFL having given up only 179 points while scoring 280 themselves. And I, I hope that you and Steven Titus talked about next week's game. Yes, we did. It could be a prelude to, you know, what could, could be, be a arena bowl. <laughs> yeah, and, and they haven't announced where the arena bowl's at yet. That, that's keeping being kept under wraps. But if things play out the way they should, and, you know, there's still games to be played. Billings with one loss. Albany, who's coming into town next week, has no losses. You know, that's going to be an exciting one for the Billings community to rally around and, and really create a hostile environment for a, an unbeaten team. Really trying to get Cedric Walker to put an and one in uh, in Albany's uh, loss column. Right now it was a close game between Albany and Orlando. Albany had like a four-point lead, but there was only four minutes to go, and that's a world of time in the oh, AFL. Yeah, that, so that's a forever Keep an eye day. on how that game turns out between the Firebirds from Albany and the Predators from Orlando. It so really has become like kind of a community thing, Jay. You know, at, at halftime they had the the Lady Outlaws or the Outlaw Dancers. Absolutely. You know, they had uh, a bunch of uh, you know mini Outlaw cheerleaders out there doing the dance routine. Jay got into it a little bit. It was one of his favorite <laughs> pop artists. Uh, who was it, Jay? Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Are you kidding me? Dua Lipa. I, I like Dua Lipa too. Who are we kidding? We all like Dua Lipa. But you know. It, you know, we, we lots of breaks here. It, it really is a, a, a pretty family-friendly atmosphere. A, again, if you're up against the boards, watch yourselves a little bit. But you see the folks and the fans right up against those boards, and the players love it. They're giving them high fives on the way to the uh, to the sideline, and when they celebrate in the touchdowns, the fans are right there. Here's the kick. Giffen's going to bounce it off the boards, and it's lost out of bounds. That was Caleb Brown trying to catch it. So that'll be a dead ball. The ball went over the wall by rule will be placed on the 10 yard line, first down, Washington. So no return. That's gotta be liking that for Bailey Giffen, although he wanted to get another deuce. Yeah, he was, he was shooting for the two in between the uprights right there. That one falls out of bounds. Washington actually does get better field position than they normally see when they're return game. So Giffen giving them a little bit of a gift. 
uh, kicking that ball out of bounds here. A little bit more breathing room for uh, DeAndre Burrell, Burrell to start is, his second possession yeah. here in the second half. See if he can catch one of these big wide receiver targets in Williams or Wilkerson. Burrell drops back, gets the pass, and it's intercepted. Harvey. Derek Harvey down inside the five. And this time Harvey used both of his hands. We saw the, inter or the touchdown earlier in the first half with one hand. This time he just jumps way up in the sky, plucks this one out of the air, and Burrell with a costly turnover here in the second half. Now that time Burrell dropped straight back and just looked at his receiver Underthrew it a little bit. Let's see if we can get it on the replay, but a great play by Derek Harvey. He kind of turned his back and just went, whoop. Nope, I'll take that. Thank you very much. He's got some penalty flags after that play. Well, Derek Harvey, they have him listed at six foot, but he's got the after wingspan the play, of a much taller human. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 55 on Washington. That's half the distance to the goal and it first down Billings. That goes against Jake Oliphant, and he's not happy about it, but that's the way it is. So Billings yep. He's using some Here's colorful the, language right there. Check the interception As you see Burrell here. right there. And oh. Harvey just jumps right into the passing lane. Deshaun Williams was the intended receiver. Derek Harvey right there with the nice heads up play. Turnover for Billings. And the outlaw set up at the, the two, two yard line. They struggled right in this general area. They had great field position to start the first half. Couldn't push it in. We'll see how things change here for Billings. Here's the give to Harvey again. Second effort gets him in, Jay. Nice job. Didn't think he had it to begin with. But the well, good, good he didn't. They line put, job. They put Blake Mitchell in at fullback, added him, a big old lineman there. Harvey just followed the big blockers, and that second effort gets him into the end zone. So he gets the interception. And then the run play right here. You see big Blake Mitchell right there. And then the second effort by Harvey backs it in, back it into the end zone. Takes a couple of Washington Wolf Packians with him. And Billings up big here in the third. Harvey with the two-yard touchdown run after the interception. That's pretty rare. The guy gets an interception and then caps it off with the touchdown run in his own. So here comes Bailey Giffen. Bailey the boot, they call him. And you can see why Ooh. as he splits the uprights. Put that into the sky boxes here yeah. at, at Metro Park. Those are empty tonight, but that probably would have caused some people to flinch up there. He has a very, very strong leg. Bailey, the boot, Giffen, everyone likes to talk. Coach Cedric Walker says, I can't believe our kicker has a nickname. But what a great nickname. I've mentioned this before, Bailey out of... Bryant, Texas, Lamar University was second team all Southland Conference in college. He's 25. He's also a right-handed pitcher in baseball, so multi-sport athlete. And he has a master's in applied <laughs> clinical psychology. Of course, a kicker with a degree in clinical psychology, but he, he lets his foot do the talking, the well, boot. He, he, he does have a big awesome leg. Year. He, he, he really does have a big leg. He's been awesome for this Billings Outlaw football team. He, he's, you know, the, the strength of his leg is one thing. It is uh, a very strong leg, but the accuracy that he has, right. and he combines that. I mean, he is a weapon. He's got the most deuces, which is a thing. Uh, in arena ball, kicking it between the uprights earns you two points on the board, and he's got more than anybody else in arena football. Oh, he kicks that one off the... Uh scoreboard that hangs so that'll be a dead ball you cannot bank them you can't <laughs> bank them off the, the scoreboard kick at the scoreboard by rule the ball will be placed at the 25 yard line first down washington that's uh, the first one i've ever seen him do that with i think i've seen him hit hit it once before but when, if you're here at the state in the metro park how they don't kick it into the scoreboard yeah. is a hard thing it hangs right over the top it's a great big scoreboard one of those four-sided scoreboards if you haven't been here but so I'm sure Bailey Giffen isn't happy about that. His favorite thing to do is to make tackles. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a big dude. No, it, but he does not miss leg day, folks. It is not an optical illusion on your on your screen. He's a big dude uh, and, and very talented with his right foot. All right, so here it is. 
DeAndre Burrell as his team, the, the Wolfpack, have it in good shape right at the midfield stripe at the 25. Here's Burrell getting some pressure. He's going to be sacked. Sacked by the Outlaws. That's Antonio Smiley. Smiley is smiling tonight. Does a great job. I, I thought they had everything picked up there up front. But not this time. Billings runs a little bit of a twi twist inside. And Smiley comes free right into the lap of the newly acquired DeAndre Burrell. That's a tough way to uh, welcome a new quarterback to your team. Just missing the twist inside. And there's a little bit of discussion going on up front as to what actually happened there. I'll tell you, Antonio Smiley just beat everybody to the punch. He's 5'11", but weighs 295. Well, he got into Durandre Burrell's lap in a hurry. So Burrell back under in the uh, shotgun. Can complete out to Deshaun Williams. And he has enough for a first down for the Wolf Pack. And Williams winning that one-on-one -on -one battle with Cedric Thomas right there. Williams. Check that. I'm sorry. Back to the original Real, line of scrimmage exactly. after that sack. Gets back there. Big target like that. You know, they've, they've tried to get it to him. Real quick on the outside, that's a good consistent play for Washington. So it'll bring up third down now, still third and 10. You see Smiley there on your, la in your screen right there at home. That guy's been active up front all night. That Billings defensive front doing a good job. Yeah, penalty flag flies, the pass intended over here for Max Novak, but he couldn't hang on. I think we're gonna get Finau going a little bit early from his Jack linebacker spot. It looked that spot. way from here, didn't it? 521 left here in the third period. You see the score. The Outlaws 44. The Wolf Pack Illegal six. defense, number 44 on Billings. Left his stance too early. And it's five yard penalty and an automatic first down. Good eyes, Bobby. You spied it from here. So five yard will bring up a third and six. No, they're gonna that's an automatic first down. Oh, you're right. Yep. So they're gonna move the whole chain set and get those guys into. So new, safe position. new life here for the Wolfpack. That chain crew, they've got those those down markers rigged up so that they can hang independently and our, our chain gang can sit behind the play out of harm's way. Good those idea. guys are pretty there's, active every night. There's all not night. a lot of room down there. No, them. there is not. All right, so here goes Burrell. Williams in motion and Burrell's in trouble again. And the sack goes to Chase McGowan. Wow. Right there, Burrell just trying to buy some time. He was looking for Williams deep. And you just see Chase McGowan come free from his defensive end spot, able to get the sack and track down Burrell for another quarterback sack. McGowan played his college ball at the University of Delaware. He was a blue hen. <laughs> just watch him right here. Active gets up inside, beats his offensive tackle really quickly up inside. Not a lot of time for Burrell. I'll tell you what, that was a nice move by Chase McGowan. Just comes up inside, gives up contain because he gets up field so fast. And Burrell sacked for the second time on this drive. McGowan listed at 6'1", 265. And he doesn't look like he's got that much weight on him. Maybe a little better shape. Are you questioning the, the, the <laughs> measurements here, Jay? I'm questioning my stats. <laughs> Fox stops. Prior to the delay of game, timeout, Washington. They're right. first to the half. So the Wolfpack wanted this to talk about This will also be a media timeout. We see the Washington coaching staff out there. Coach J.R. Wells out on, the, out on the field there trying to get things cleaned up. We'll take a quick break. Not all replacement windshields are created equal. At Econoglass, we install windshields that are made to a car manufacturer's original specifications. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next windshield installation. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Remodeling your bathroom? Econoglass can transform your home with our Lumax shower doors. Designed for strength and stability and typically installed in one day or less. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next shower doors. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Oh, hey there. Are you drinking out of a regular cup? Why, when you can have a loud cup? You can be loud and then have a sip. It's not loud in here, so where's my cup? Go out loud! Yes! Go! Downs for Parker. Tonight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my... 
Jay Cohn talking with Bobby Beers here, uh, looking at the stats of this game between the visiting Wolfpack and the Outlaws, 44 to six. You see the score. According to my stats, Bobby Isaac Harker has six touchdown passes already in the game. Well, you know, we, we talk about some of the different things that are happening. Billings is doing a good job with their uh, protection up front for Harker and really uh, taking good care of the ball. They did have the one, uh, you know, the, the fumble by Brown, but they recovered it. But Billings doesn't turn the ball over, and then they, they cause a lot of disruption up front defensively for the opposing offense. And so, you know, Coach Cedric Walker's got a nice recipe going for success here in Billings, and it's continuing tonight against this Washington Wolfpack trying to find its way with a new quarterback. Second and 20 now for the Wolfpack after the sack. Burrell in trouble again. Flag flies, and he's sacked. Back inside the 10. Well, let's see what the penalty flag is. Yeah, Fino again back there in the backfield wreaking havoc from his linebacker spot. We're going to hear what's going on. Holding 92 on the offense. That penalty has been declined. Third down. DeAndre Burrell wondering where did all the time go? Just well, not, not out of time to go through that progression. One or two. One or two looks, you got to get rid of it. Well, Jake McGowan was coming hard. He gets the holding penalty called against his offensive tackle. And Finau is just coming right off the rear end of the defensive tackle right there. And there's no place for Burrell to go. And they, there's a long way to go for a first down here, Jay. <laughs> you can say that again. They've gone nothing just outside but backwards. Seattle trying to get to Billings for a first down here for Washington. Here goes Williams. Going deep. Balls away, balls away. Intended and hauled Get in Get a lot of it back with Novak. Max Novak making up for it. And Cedric Thomas on the coverage there, but not before Novak gets a lot of it back. Brings up fourth down and manageable. Well, that was a better pass. Watch Burrell here. He sees that Novak is loose along the boards. And there's Just no way that Cedric Just lays it up Cedric and allows Thomas him to is, run underneath yeah, it. Yeah, he's not going to get Not going to catch that. Cedric Thomas a little... Uh, late to the that play so let's see if deandre burrell as bob bobby said it was they were back inside the 10 they had to get down to the 10. that was about a third down and 40 and they got 35 of it back so fourth let's call it fourth and five fourth and six burrell back pressure comes throws incomplete intended down there for X-Man, Xavier Crawford overthrown. So that'll be a turnover on downs and the Outlaws will take over. Another Billings defense stop. And that's really, that, that really helps out your offense, not forcing them to feel like they have to score. And of course, Billings offense hasn't really had that problem tonight. You've talked about the success Harker's had. And uh, you know, folks, as, as I sit here and live and breathe, Jay's favorite players on the field. Daniel Southwick is in the game. The first <laughs> snap from scrimmage since he joined the Outlaws to start this season. Pictures will do it no, He's no justice he as to how happy Jay is right now, folks. He Southwick is, is taking snaps here. And here we go. There goes Arthur Anderson. Another pass in the backfield to Dwayne Brown. Complete. He completes his pass. Brown right there, just that little quick hitter we see so much in football nowadays. Brown great with the ball in his hands, able to get five yards, six yards, gets second manageable. Southwick does a nice job getting that first pass out of the way. Nice completion. Brown able to get a little bit of yardage with it. Continue just this momentum. 42-year-old Daniel Southwick <laughs> from Provo, Utah, played football for BYU, went on a two-year mission, went to Oregon State, then Dixie State, and he literally has played for every indoor football team in America. His entire locker is a museum. Southwick drops back, looking, looking. He's going to run it across the 20, hit from behind, almost got the first down. He's hauled down at the 22. Both of our quarterbacks combined age is in the 70s, 77 years old between the 35-year-old Burrell and the 42-year. That's some quick mouth with somebody with Illegal defense, my education. Number 11 on Washington, dropped into coverage. It's a 10 yard, pen five yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic, automatic first down. First down. Washington just can't buy a break tonight. Wouldn't have been enough yardage for a first down, but the automatic first down given the, the penalty allows Southwick another set of downs to wreak some havoc. 
So we saw the 42-year quarterback kind of scramble there, a couple of yards, and then falls down, but gets a first down with the penalty. He's got to be like having another coach on the field. He has two master's degrees and is working <laughs> on his Ph.D. I'm not kidding. Southwick throwing and overthrows. Dwayne Brown just had a step on his receiver, but Southwick's pass just a little too far. It reminds that, that, that type of play, when those walls come into play, reminds me that there's no warning track in arena football. In baseball, when they're running out there, you hear, you hear right. the different surface. You saw Dwayne Brown on that one just kind of feel for the wall, trying to figure out exactly where he was on the field. Knew it was coming up quick, and Southwick, good pass. Only his guy was going to get it, but uh, comes up incomplete looking for Brown again. Offensive coordinator Shedrick Bonner himself, an uh, indoor football league legend. Legend, Talking to Daniel Southwick. Uh, I'm not sure who, who's the elder statesman there or not. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Shredrick has, uh, has a couple of years on him. Not by much. They might have taken some classes together at some point, though, Jay. We're taking a break. The end of the third quarter has come and gone. It's the Outlaws, 44, the Wolfpack 6. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in a moment. When storms happen, storm chasers from out of state immediately follow. You've probably seen them running around town lately. My father has owned this company for over 20 years. I've been local my whole life, and we're going to be here long after the storm is over. Donahue Roofing offers an unprecedented lifetime warranty. We're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. We'll work with your insurance company to make it easy on you. When you need help, choose local. And call Donahue Roofing and Siding today. Welcome back. Fourth quarter action dead ahead here at the Metro Park Arena, TDS Fiber Field, home field for the Billings Outlaws. The 5 and 1 Outlaws, as you see on the scoreboard, enjoying a 44 to 6 advantage over the visiting Washington Wolf Pack. Here's Daniel Southwick, the quarterback for the Billings Outlaws, throwing and finding his man. That's Dwayne Brown. Dwayne's had a nice, nice game here, as he usually does for the Outlaws. That's good for a first down for Billings. Yeah, Brown right there does a nice job. Southwick, all that experience right there, finds Brown again, puts the ball in a spot where he gets it. This Billings offense, doesn't matter who's throwing the balls, these guys go up and grab them. Dwayne Brown came in with uh, the, as the leading receiver for Billings. 21 receptions for 343 yards, and he's got a ton of receptions here tonight, including a full court return of a kickoff that was for not because it was a holding call brought it back, but it was outstanding individual effort. Here's Southwick. That's Harvey again. He reached over the end zone. Are they going to call it good? What are we getting here? No call yet. Delayed call from the officials. There it Touchdown. is. Touchdown Billings. Harvey does a great job. Dwayne Brown does a lot of the yeoman's work for this Billings offense, catching a lot of short passes, doing a lot of return work, but Harvey's the one with the nose for the end zone as Southwick just reads it all the way across, puts it into Harvey's mitts. He uses one or two hands regardless. He knows where to score, and he's in the end zone again as Billings is just running away with this one here in the, in the fourth quarter. That makes it 50-6, to six, Jay, and they're, they're running on all cylinders again. Here's Bailey Giffen, the boot. See if he can split the uprights. And yep, he does. Perfect. Uh -oh. He is uncanny. And another penalty flag flies as Blake Mitchell gets into it with. That's big number 92. Johnny Navarro. And Blake Mitchell. And the. That, <laughs> some fans. Uh, <laughs> using some choice words here right behind us but Rainia Mitchell right there he's had a lot of uh, unsportsmanlike conduct Nine, 92 on Washington that penalty will be banked and enforced from the results of the kickoff oh goodness okay. so Johnny Navarro called for unsportsmanlike more frustration as the he and uh, Blake Mitchell were squaring off after the touchdown pass but Daniel Southwick is in the book. Touchdown pass to, to Derek Harvey. And the Outlaws add to their advantage now leading it 51 to six. 
The first time these two teams played, it was 49 to 12. So very similar ending result here. There's lots of uh, lots of excitement going on around this. It was, it was 92 for Washington. That's Rania Mitchell. He was the one that got in the extracurriculars. The two Mitchell boys, Blake and Rania, going after it. Nonetheless, Billings comes out on top of that skirmish any way you look at it because they banked a penalty, which you can't do in any other aspect of sport that I know of, but they banked the penalty. It'll be enforced after the kickoff here, Jay, and we're about ready to underway with one of my favorite players. I, I This guy doesn't miss leg day. Look at those thighs. That guy's got power all day. Oh, and he hits He does. The he rafters. hit them both. <laughs> He's got, he's got a deuce. He hit the scoreboard, and now he hit the, the walkway across the roof of the yeah, metro. The ball had an overhead box. structure by rule. It will be placed on the 25-yard line. Well, However, the previous unsportsmanlike conduct will be enforced from that spot. Ten yards, first down, Washington. Oh, so, so they, they put it on the other Mitchell. They put it on the Billings Mitchell, not the Washington Mitchell. So the banked unsportsmanlike will... Work its way out to the 15 yard line. Here we go, Washington. Trying to get some points on the board and a little bit of offensive consistency. Yeah, Billings well, has cleaned up the defensive penalties though this half, Jay. Absolutely. So far. Well, head coach J.R. Wells would just like to get DeAndre Burrell into the flow of the game. He hasn't played for a while. He's only been with the team for two days. Uh, he just wants to see what he can do and develop some rapport with these receivers. Right. Delay a game. Now a delay a game again. Delay game. Number 15 on Washington, five yard penalty. It stays first down. So they'll back him up even further. Well, they had to run a guy on, they didn't have enough guys in the huddle, offensive huddle. They had to run a guy on late. So things just kind of going from bad to worse here for Washington. We did have a chance to talk to head coach J.R. Wells. Bobby and I did before the game. He was all positive. He uh, likes what he sees. He knows they're building a foundation for a franchise. And he isn't expecting to set the world on fire. Here's Burrell, fumbles it from behind. And it's Harvey's picked got up it. by Harvey again. And he's gonna take it in for the score. Derek wow. Harvey, what a game he's having. Well, I'll tell you what, Jay, this starts up front. We're gonna see this play from the jump as Harvey again finds the end zone, this time on a fumble recovery, runs it in, but this starts at the snap of the ball. Raphael Turner's 5'8", 260 pounds, and he gets run over by big number 94, Antonio Smiley. Causes the pressure right there by a multitude of outlaws. Ball's on the ground, Harvey picks it up. What did we say the last? Off to the races. He scored the last touchdown. He scores the next touchdown. <laughs> and Billings just running away. There's not enough accolades that you can say positively about how this thing's rolling for Billings. And if you're watching it right now, you're looking for answers. I don't know how many degrees they've got on that sideline in Billings, but I don't know if there's anybody that's going to fix those problems tonight. Okay, saw a good shot of Maniah Smith and Cedric Walker. Yep. And there goes Bailey Giffen splitting the uprights again. Fumble recovery. Well, we talked about this early in the game. One of the reasons that both Billings quarterbacks are able to do what they do is because of the protection up front. And they've done a good job all night protecting Southwick and Harker. And they've been, you know, there's really been no, no pressure right there. And it, if you're going to allow a quarterback really just unfettered time, they're going to hurt you. So... There's a, there's a couple of things that you could you know, possibly do yeah. in the meantime, but a little consistent at the quarterback play for Washington maybe, but Billings is doing a good job. They're a good football team. Their record shows it, and they're showing that they can bounce back from a, a little bit of a setback suffered last week, so. I gotta love this. Here comes one of the, this is big Brian Sarnowski with the Wolfpack going on the, on the boards, giving all the young fans high fives. This is a family uh, friendly, very atmosphere intimate. here and very intimate just, atmosphere absolutely so here we'll get another look at the boot bailey giffen and then kick off what's he going to hit this time jay any bets uh i'm going to think he's going to come very close to another deuce we'll see xavier crawford back 
He'll have the best look at it. The kick is going. He's got a shot here. Nope. Off the rebound net. Crawford gets it. Cross the goal line out to the 10. Uh, now out on the boards where he's smashed into the boards by Fino. Fino. Siasi Fino is very active in the tackling game tonight, whether it's on special teams. He's done a great job on defense. You know, he got the fumble, he got a sack. Uh, like I said, he's done a great job, finds the ball wherever he's at. And Crawford right there, Washington found themselves, that's, that's their best return of the night, coming out of the end zone, fielding it off the net. So Crawford showing a little bit of something there to everybody else, uh, you know, getting the ball out away Piazza from the end zone. Is back under center or in the shotgun for Washington. Burrell's over on the sidelines. Trying to get a breather and things have moved fairly quickly and uh, DeAndre really hasn't had much time to think about it. Split out here to the near side is J.R. Nelson and now in motion goes Makaya Lee. And this is Little Nelson. Quick hitter to Nelson yeah. right there. Out to the 20. Close to a first down. Yeah, this has been a pretty good play. For them all night, doesn't matter, really matter who catches the ball, but right there, Nelson, again, the Montana product, coming back to Billings. Able to get the ball out, gets good for eight yards there on first down. Cedric Thomas in on the stop for the Outlaws. Now in motion goes Kyle Lee, Novak. Piasse finds Novak right at the 20, hit into the boards. And Cedric Thomas again in on the stop there. And Novak hauled nice, it in. Yeah, he's had he's a nice, nice game. He's done a nice job tonight for Washington. Novak played for Linfield College. You mentioned out of McMinnville. Also for Simon Fraser University. Last year, he told me he played for the Topeka Tropic. So he's played here in the Metro before. But Topeka had a rough season last year. Here goes Tiase. He's going to hand it off for a running play. And that's Sarnowski who was giving all of our young fans high fives and bumps there on the sideline. He gets a carry this, this evening. He's listed at six foot two twenty, so he's he that's pretty accurate. I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the numbers we get are accurate. Sometimes you have to put an eyeball on them and verify. But I, I'd give that one to Sarnowski. I give him six, maybe six foot. Novak. As Piazzi under center this time. Novak goes in motion. And Piazzi retreats straight back, gets some pressure, throws over his intended receiver, Novak, and Piazzi just had to get out of there. The, yeah. That defensive line for the Outlaws is coming back with their ears pinned. Chase McGowan was very active on that play from his left defensive end spot, gets up and around. I thought we were going to get another holding call, but he was all over, got upfield, beat him with speed, broke down. Teasi had to get rid of the ball right there, but you know that defensive front, all four or five of those guys getting upfield for Billings have, have really caused problems for this Washington offense. You bet. Antonio Smiley, good look at him there. Laquan Johnson next to him, along with Chase McGowan. They've really had their way, and then. Hunter Swoboda right behind him from his linebacker slot. There goes Nelson in motion this time. Piazzi gets the snap, looks over the middle, and intended it, intercepted! Intercepted by Sean Lewis. Yeah, and Sean. In and out of the hands of Wilkerson. Yeah, Wilkerson, that one hit him right in the eight. He bumps it up, and I'll tell you what, Sean Lewis, who Another probably, he, he just as easy could have been beat for the touchdown here, but finds the ball sitting right into his hands was a little bit late there. Sometimes it's better to be late than on time. And in that case. The rolling, the rolling on the field, interception with forward progress stopped at the one yard line, first down Billings. So that's not a touchback. They're gonna say he's out at the one. So Lewis gets credit for the, for the interception right there. Another great play by this Billings defense. Six points in an arena game. If you're a defensive, if you're on that defensive unit tonight, I don't know what you're going to do, but I think taking an ice bath is the first thing, and the next thing is probably a pseudo celebration of some sort at some point in time down the road in the near future. That's a great job by that unit. Absolutely. The entire 
Billings Outlaws team. They came to play tonight. I was here for their walkthrough yesterday and they were just yucking it up, having a good time, very loose crew. And there was no signs of a last second loss, any hangover. Here's the intended pass, intended for Dwayne Brown as Southwick puts it up. Yeah, Nelson does a good job right there of using that, that eighth or ninth defender, the wall there, just pushes Brown into that one and Southwick just hoping to you know, put it up high enough that Brown can catch up after running into the boards. So J.R. Wells and the Washington Wolfpack are gonna head home with a one and six record. But I'll tell you, they, they came to play as well tonight. They're just outgunned. Yeah, this Billings outlaws, right now, Billings is, is like a working well in a machine. They're working in some depth here. They got some, some guys that we don't often see in, in the game. Southwick with the quick pass, complete. That's to Isaiah McFarland, the ball on the ground. He ended up getting it back. Gonna get a third down out of it. Out there to Isaiah McFarland, as you said, from Ellenwood, Georgia. Ellenwood, Georgia. It's so fun to talk to the players of how they ended up here in Billings. And they all have an amazing track, story. Yeah, the backstory to get here. The backstory is always kind of interesting, really worth its own little story in and of itself. And, you know, you know, when, if you get enough time with the guys getting to know them, they, they just love ball. And that's, that, it, it's on the Billings end of it, it it's pretty apparent with, you know, just kind of the overall joy that they all play with and seem to have they've kind of bonded together. So, like I said, we're seeing some new bodies here. It might take us a second to find them on the roster, but nonetheless, they're getting some time here just because they've been so successful yeah, to this point. Terrence Ames Jr. in there. Oh, and Southway's going to get sacked at the one. They're going to they're going to give him. That's Johnny Navarro, number 52, I believe, in there. It is Johnny Navarro, recent addition, last few days, a new addition over there in Washington, coming from his linebacker spot good spot by the referee keeping him out of the end zone so we got fourth down here well, Southwick has to be thinking hmm maybe that maybe this isn't that fun yeah. <laughs> well, that, that PhD is looking pretty good he was just he was waiting on that just waiting one second just to see if that guy would clear and then he started feeling the rush and pulled the ball back down Great experience here, the Arena Football League. Really showing no signs of the controversy that's followed the league here in Billings. It's been all thumbs up so far this year. Well, yeah, it, it, Montana's kind of insulated in that matter. Would right. you say, I mean, it doesn't matter what happens elsewhere in the world, we'll hear about it. Delay game, number 12 on the offense, half the distance to the goal, stays fourth down. And not gonna take much off of being inside your own one, so they'll go you know, half the distance of the ball back towards the end zone. But good point, Bobby. I mean, we're pretty insulated here in Montana. We, we at least feel that. But the, the fans here were treated to, they, they were good football early, they're good football tonight. And, you know, despite the controversy that happens within the rest of the league, it was just, you know, guys that show up, go out to practice, come and play the game. You know, everybody, you know, nobody here, we didn't hear any of the rumblings that we heard elsewhere. We had guys showing up for games, ready to play. Another penalty against Billings. Well, that happens when you get a bunch of new guys in there. A little right. bit of jer little jitters, a little bit of adrenaline. Fighting for roster spots, that's a competitive deal, that's a job. And they move it back just a little Full bit start further. On the offense, half the distance to the goal, stays fourth down. At the same time, Billings is trying to get as much time off the clock as possible. Exactly. But these players are enjoying their time in here. And, and you get to talk about Southwick. In, I, including I am in total awe of I know. this guy. I'm not I'm not making fun the of the educational at all. prowess yeah. that this guy has in his longevity in professional football needs to be talked about. And I'm, I'm just so glad happy. that he got on the field tonight. He's gonna throw oh. oh nearly intercepted number seven. Brandon Wellington would like to have that one back. The Southwick is trying to explain to Sheffrick Bonner here. I was actually throwing it not to him. Here's another <laughs> look at it. Uh, he just Number what? seven stepped right in front of the well, other. Well, we talked. We've talked about the pressure that that Washington has been under all night. Southwick, right there, had to throw that off of his back foot just because Washington was able to get some pressure on that, on that set of downs, and Billings comes away unsuccessful. But the 52-point lead that they're enjoying right now is going to allow them to, you know, kind of learn from those mistakes and especially those young guys. Make sure that, you know, they get coached up 
come Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whenever they go into the film room. You think the Wolfpack will run this? They're at the virtual four-inch line. Uh, looks like another timeout. Timeout. Billings, their first of the half. Uh, Coach Walker was pretty fired up at somebody. At something. Oh, we're no, we're missing a guy. So Here did, we go. Didn't want to get called for not enough. Yeah, needed a D lineman. Laquan Johnson's hopping back on the field. So the Wolfpack, all they got to do is lean forward here, and they can pretty much score a touchdown. But we'll see what they call. I would think maybe one of the uh, one of their fullbacks might have a chance at this. Maybe Sarnowski, or just quarterback or sneak the it quarterback in there. Sneak it. You see just how close the fans are to the action down here. Got some. You know, it's not just Jay that enjoys the music being played here. Folks from all over Billings in the greater Yellowstone area enjoying tonight's game. Next week, let's talk a little bit about next week. The Outlaws will host the Albany Firebirds in what many believe might be a preview of Arena Bowl 33. We'll have to see what the outcome of tonight's Predators-Firebirds game is. Yep, just a quick quarterback and sneak and brings it to 58-12. Well, that's how many points they scored against Billings the first time, so they've equaled that output a one-yard touchdown run by jt teasse and melissa strother is going to trot onto the field for another oh nope they're going to go for three they're just going to go for two here oh they are going to try for the trace put the ball at the 10 go for three go for four four You're from right, the 10. Four. In the AFL, you can run for two from the two. You can go from the five for a three-yard PAT. Or if you go from the 10, it's a four-yard or a four-point point after. Let's see what J.R. Wells and company have in store. Here goes Novak in motion. Tease drops back, gets some pressure, throws in the end zone. It's intercepted by Cedric Thomas. He stepped right into that and hauled it in for Billings. Well, Novak ran out of real estate, and Thomas just kept kept in pursuit. Makes the interception, denies them the four-point opportunity. We see Coach Walker walking up the sideboards right there, giving high fives and dapping people up on his way out. Another successful defensive effort, at least on the conversion try right there. So the point after, they went for the four-point, and why wouldn't you? Uh, but Cedric Thomas was waiting for it, stepped right in front of Novak, and... That ball was uh, another turnover for the Billings Outlaws defense that's really come to play. They've given up 12 points tonight, but six in each half, that's not bad. Well, that, that defense is really, you know, you know, we talked about the the number of points they've given up. They haven't hurt that MO at all tonight. Only given up 12 to this point. But that, that defense is one of the real, real key components of, of their record as it looks like they're going to run it to, to six and one here and very easily you know that 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 loss last week is is you know we talk about how they were going to bounce back from it. that was a good game against the good nashville cats team i'll tell you what jay th th this has the markings of a, a pretty salty postseason football run for this billings outlaws yeah, football absolutely team. there's a good shot of melissa strother the female kicker who's uh, a History maker herself, the first female to play and score points in the AFL in some three decades. And her kick goes out of bounds, but might have been out of bounds at the three yard line. That was a pretty good kick. Did someone go for a shot here? there? The ball bounced on the ground, went over the wall. By rule, the ball would be placed at the 10 yard line, first down Billings. Well, that's an effective kickoff then because there was no return, and the ball comes right out to the 10. So well, the way that Billings has been returning the ball, that is, that, that's probably better than the yeah, alternative exactly. tonight. A little disappointed in the fan on the sidelines. They're unable to handle the ball. Got a little <laughs> air time, and then now he's going to have to explain to his friends why he can't catch. Clock running, less than two minutes to go. And the Outlaws will be turning the page and looking forward. You heard that. We're going to take a break at the one-minute warning, which is a classic in uh, 
AFL. They take a break at one minute. Here's Hunter Swoboda. Breaks the tackle up over the 20 to the 22-yard line. Adding to his lead leading yardage. That's a 10-yard gain on first down. Ball's moving. The other, Chain's moving. The other nickname for Hunter, they call him the, the humble hammer. I think I like the Swiss Army knife better. Well, he, he does play. He plays on both sides of the ball, plays on special teams. Very physical player, too. He does a good job for this Billings Outlaws. He played for Washita Baptist College. When he was in high school, he was highly Time recruited. Out. Media. And then broke his leg, both the fibia and the tibia, and that pretty much did it for the rest of his uh, uh, recruiting. But yeah, got to hand it to him. He's come back. He's still playing football. Exactly. Good for Hunter Swoboda. One minute to go. The clock has stopped. 58 to 12. The Outlaws enjoying this homestand against the visiting Washington Wolfpack. And the fans are going to go home happy tonight as they're handing out some free shirts. All right, they say we're going to take a break. So we'll take a timeout as you do as well. We'll get you back here for the final minute of this game right after this. Oh, hey there. Are you drinking out of a regular cup? Why, when you can have a loud cup? You can be loud and then have a sip. It's not loud in here, so where's my cup? Go out loud! Yes! Go! Final minute we await here at the TDS Fiber Field in Billings, Metro Park Arena. The Washington Wolfpack came in hoping to right the ship, but they got more than they could handle from the Billings Outlaws tonight. Daniel Southwick, your quarterback, and he's giving it to Swoboda, and the Outlaws will be content just to run this. Oh, and penalty flags fly again. I was going to talk a little bit about Hunter Swoboda out of Washita Baptist out of Arkansas. You know, suffered a bad injury right in his high school career. It kind of, he was looking division one perhaps because yeah. he's got quite a bit of size, six foot 190, and he can uh, play unsportsmanlike rather penalty, physical. number 50 on Billings. It's 10 yards from the previous, or from the end of the run. Second down. Watched an interview with him. He said, I just, I just want to play football. And watching him yesterday in the walkthrough here, he was having more fun than anyone out there. Yeah, he's one of those guys that, you know, his his enthusiasm is contagious. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an offensive guy or defensive guy. He plays on both sides of the ball. So why not hang out with that dude? Because he's a glue guy. He's going to make sure that, you know, his efforts unmatched, his passion for the game is obvious. Guys like Hunter Svoboda, you know, they're guys that you want to be around. And so you, you can right. tell by the way he plays, takes care of the ball. He knows what's important. And, and you know, the, he's a very valuable piece for this Billings Outlaw success story this year. Dallas Dixon goes in motion. Southwick will just hand it off. And the clock is running less than 30 seconds. Stop now with 28 seconds to go. Let's talk a little bit about next week, Bobby. Albany Firebirds come into town. Definitely the top, top two Washington. teams record-wise the in the Half. AFL. And it is perhaps a preview of Arena Bowl 33. Well, Billings got kicked in the teeth last week. And so they got a little bad, a little bad taste in their mouth. They righted the ship this week. They very played a very complete game. And I think Correction. that was Washington's second timeout of the They're half. gonna have to do much the same next week. You've got a team that's, you know, however many and oh, depending on the outcome of tonight's game. Of course, when we're doing this broadcast, we have no access to how the outcome of that game has gone. It was close with four minutes to go. And so coming into next week, get next week's game, they can turn the page real quick after this one start focusing on that one but i i imagine that coach walker and and this team is going to rally the troops and and be ready loaded for bear for that for the uh albany predators to come into town we hope the fans will come firebirds out. rather albany firebirds loaded, loaded for bear as well southwick drops straight back he'd like to complete something and he does and finds dwayne brown dwayne brown he's been the man of the hour ever since the opening kickoff of this game where he took it the the length of the field timeout. only to have it called back Washington. because of the Their final timeout of the game. holding call. Final timeout called by Washington. Let's not forget about the Salina Liberty and Haran O'Neill. 
We play them one more time at the end of this season before the playoffs. Yeah. Right now, it looks like Billings and Salina will probably be either the number two and number three seed, depending how those games turn out. Yeah. It, that, but it's, that's a grudge match between the coach, former coach of the Outlaws, Ron O'Neill, and, the current, and the current coach. So Ron O'Neill took the Billings to a number of championships. A lot of good football played there. And, uh, you know, down in Salina, he's having some success. Like you said, they're the number three seed right there, right now. And, and the, the Outlaws here, they're number two. But, you know, there's there's still things to play for. And, you know, playoff football is important, but you can't focus on the playoffs until you finish a regular season. So, And you it, know the coaches will take it just the proverbial cliche, but rings true one play and one game at a time. Yeah. They don't look too far down. False start. Number seven on the offense, five-yard penalty, stays fourth down. We're seeing a little bit of, uh, I'd say, new guys, but Dallas well, Dixon isn't a new guy. He's yeah, coming off of a coming off of a timeout, it always gets a little bit wonky with the play clock, and you know it starts with a 40-second clock after the snap, and then you go into the timeout, it gets to a 25, so they just restart the 25 and get going. There's a lot, lot of new guys, a lot of, a lot of new guys. Still we'll 20 seconds to go. And there is the pass from Southwick. And it is complete. Again, Dwayne Brown. Man does everything. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough for the first down. So Washington will get another shot on offense. Oh, we got a penalty here. See what happens. Clock down to 14 seconds. We mentioned Dwayne Brown leading the team in receiving. He's also uh, the third leading rusher on the team. And he also returns kicks. And Cut plays block. defense. 17 on the offense. That penalty has been declined. The results of the play is a first down Washington. So the call goes against Hunter Swoboda. Washington just wants this ball to run a couple of offensive plays. What a difference a week makes. Last week, the Outlaws were fighting for their lives against the Nashville Cats, only to see the last play of the game go against them, and they lose with one second to go. And here today, they are leading by 46 with 14 seconds left. Little different atmosphere here inside the Metro. Here goes Tease, drops back, looking for some help. Finds, I think it was complete or did it come? No, they're gonna call the that incomplete. End. That was to Vincent Wilkerson. And Sean and Lewis did a good job right there breaking up that pass play. Took a little bit of time to develop. And it took the whole rest of the time of the game. Let's see, did they stop it for one more play? The clock says zero. Please, please put seven seconds I thought on the they clock. Put more seven time. seconds. Not over quite yet. Seven seconds yet to play. Next week, we mentioned the Billings takes on... Uh, Albany, the Washington Wolfpack, will take on the Southwest Kansas Storm. And that'll be a pretty good game. Southwest Kansas is 4-3 and three entering the play this weekend. Well, Washington's got a lot of things to figure out. They get another week with Burrell under, the, under their belt. Let's see if they can find a little magic there, but... This Billings team gets out of tonight really unscathed injury-wise. When that's an excellent thing, especially after losing uh, one of their star players, Karan Siggins, last weekend. Piazza looking, 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 throws over everything. And two seconds left. Two seconds still on the clock. That'll wake him up down there next exactly. to the boards. Last call was a little bit ago, so probably not as fired up as they once were but give it a shot here is are you fans at home watching this game uh next week will be a great time to come out and support the billings outlaws they're going to have one of the best teams in the league if not the best team here next week we'll see who prevails in that but uh fair to say the albany firebirds have never been here in billings before no, albany firebirds uh, an original arena team they they're a lot of history in, a, in multiple leagues, and, and it'd be great to have that, that franchise hosted here in Billings. Jose, final play of the game. Finds it complete. Still going, and to the end Got zone. Got him, touchdown. 
Vince Wilkerson, and it's a touchdown on the last play of the game. Kind of deja vu for That's the outlaw. That's the final play of the game. <laughs> Got to find a way to keep him out of the end zone on the last play of the game. Those are the type of things that kind of haunt you. Well, perhaps no That's extra point the as, it, as we see the see the uh, officials jogging off the field here. Everybody's dapping them up. So last play of the game. Everybody's just kind of trying to figure out what's going on here. But that's it, folks. 58-18. Your outlaws, your homestanding outlaws, go to six and one on the season. And the Wolfpack dropped to one and six. But maybe they can use that last touchdown pass from Tiase to Wilkerson, build on some positives coming out of there. So they can uh, take on Southwest Kansas next weekend and look for another building building, building block in uh, setting up this foundation for this franchise out there in Everett, Washington. Well, we saw, we saw Billings able to overcome last week's stumble. And then conversely with the conversation we had with Coach uh, J.R. Wells prior to the game, the foundation that's being laid there in Washington, there's a lot of work to be done out there. A lot of questions still to be answered. But uh, nonetheless, things worked out tonight here in Billings for the Outlaws. And, you know, looking forward to next week, Jay. Absolutely. Bobby, thanks for uh, joining us again. We'll see how we can get this uh, bigger crowd to file in here next weekend as the Outlaws really have showed their flexibility out coming, out, coming back after a heartbreaking loss, establishing some defensive moxie right away. One of the first plays of this game, they get a sack for a safety kind of set the tone right off the board yeah a lot of good pieces of this this uh outlaws outlaws team here you know coach walker's got a lot of tools to work with and he's putting things together for a nice end of the season run here so the fans enjoying a little uh post game party with the with the players getting to know lots and lots of good sportsmanship out there as uh the visiting wolf pack came to play tonight we're going to take a quick break gather our thoughts before we send you off to next week but again the final you see it there the outlaws humbling the washington wolfpack 58 to 18 tonight we'll be back to wrap it up after this not all replacement windshields are created equal. At Econoglass, we install windshields that are made to a car manufacturer's original specifications. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next windshield installation. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Remodeling your bathroom? Econoglass can transform your home with our Lumax shower doors. Designed for strength and stability and typically installed in one day or less. Visit one of our locations to speak with an expert about your next shower doors. Get quality. Get Econoglass. Oh, not at his age. Absolutely not. We are back in the Metra here in Billings, Montana. That was head coach Cedric Walker sharing some uh, kudos with some of the young fans here in Billings. The final, if you're just joining us, you missed a, a wild offensive shootout by the Billings Outlaws as they defeat the Washington Wolfpack 58 to 18 there's quarterback Isaac Harker signing some autographs he had uh, to my count at least six touchdown passes in this game let's go ahead and roll those highlights folks lots of them for this Billings team we see Harker right here we just saw him signing autographs this is him on a double move hits Arthur Anderson the fourth right there for another Billings touchdown and then Billings right here you see Mr. Harvey he doesn't matter if he's on offense or defense from his linebacker spots just hung jumps into the passing lane grabs the interception and then hands it off right back to him gets in the end zone with great second effort spins in there for another touchdown tonight that wasn't going to be his last one though his backup see, quarterback daniel southwick jay has to call him but guess who catches the touchdown and stretches for the end zone it's harvey again Derek harvey that's just awesome he not only intercepted that pass and they pay, paid him off with getting a little run and here is uh, that Billings defense yeah, you know, another... getting home at the quarterback and then Harvey yet again. I mean, there's your player of the game, Jay. Yeah, no Asked, question. Found the, found the end zone on offense and on defense. Made, made plays on both sides of the ball right there. And then the interception, just very opportunistic for Lewis to be in the right spot at the right time. Finds it. And then right here at the end of the game, we had uh, Vincent, Vincent Wilkerson. Wilkerson. 
able to great second effort on his part too able to get it in there on another last play of the game touchdown against this billings outlaws defense they don't give up much tonight but again another last play of the game touchdown you know brings that score just a little bit closer at 58 to 18. there's deshaun williams the big tight end for the Wolfpack, talking to shedrick bonner the offensive coordinator for billings and there is uh Siaso Finau, he had a good game, too. Had a couple of sacks, to his credit, and talking to some of the young fans here. It's just been a, a fun night of arena football here in Billings, Montana, and there the Outlaws chalk up their sixth win of the season. They're 6-1, and one, and they'll host the Albany Firebirds next weekend here in the Big Barn. Washington goes home 1-6, and six, and they'll face Southwest Kansas Storm next week. That'll do it. The Outlaws pick up the victory, move on to next week's game against Albany. Bobby Beers, thanks for joining us tonight. Pre always a pleasure working with you. A few fans watching here, Arena Football League does not disappoint. Nonstop action, the final from Billings. The Outlaws 58, the Wolfpack 18. We'll see you next weekend.